Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nintendo Pipeline Podcast. I'm your host this week, Mina, and joining me today, we have... Hi, I'm CMM, but you can call me Clay. And... I'm what I'm often on the Discord, but you can call me Jared. And we have a very special guest today. No one better qualified to talk about a Nintendo Direct. It's me. Why don't you introduce yourself? Raccoon. I have returned. The, or, the, maybe the most direct obsessed person I know. And I say that with love. <laughs> uh, Barry Raccoon, the king of directs. I am the king direct directs. king. I'm king of directs. <laughs> You know, you took I. You know, I. I once upon a time was 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 the biggest direct person. We're we getting into you know, war we, now. You, yeah, but that you took that throne day from in me. November that... 2019. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I passed on the torch. You know, um, but yeah, uh, we just wanted to talk about the direct today. Believe it or not. Yes. Can you believe Nintendo mm-hmm. podcast wants to talk about a Nintendo direct? Well, we actually have it's to get news. to. The biggest news of the week first, um, yeah. far bigger than the direct. Uh, mm-hmm. A Japanese guy on YouTube got the OLED and unboxed it. Oh um, man, yeah, that is big. So news. we know what the packaging is like because the only oh. thing I like more than directs is packaging. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe we should talk about that instead. You know? Yeah, we should. Uh, <laughs> we should. I could. I, I gotta nip this bit in the bud because yeah. I'm gonna talk about the <laughs> OLED actually. Unfortunately, we'll save that for next week. But. Gotta talk about Direct. And we have some big things to talk about, believe it or not. Uh, So I am... So let's just get into it. This Direct, right off the bat, opens with a cinematic trailer for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. A... And what they want... They really want to know this because they said this like two or three times. A massive expansion to Monster Hunter Rise. Not just any expansion. A massive Mm -hmm. expansion. Um... So this is coming in summer. It, it uh, from the CG trailer, we kind of got vibes, the the vibes of it at least, right? It's yeah. very very gothic looking, very Transylvania esque, I guess. And a little bit of Dark Souls, you know. Yeah, Dark Souls, Castlevania, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know if any of these are monster hunter people, but what what you guys think? Um, uh, I like I like the demo Rise. It seems like a fun game. But I, I remember Iceborne was a big deal, and people really loved that. So I've I've high hopes for this one. My my only thought is that I'm happy for Monster Hunter fans. My only Fair. thought is that I'm happy it wasn't Smash Bros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I did think like, it was gonna be Smash. Yeah, I, I thought it was Smash at first until I saw Rathalos. Well, no, no, no. When I saw Rathalos, I was like, "Is Monster Hunter in Smash?" And then it's a yeah. Capcom Presents, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. okay, it's not yeah. Smash." Um, I'm excited for this. I love Monster Hunter. I love Monster Hunter Rise in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, the game has run out of content. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of people have been itching for it. I've been itching for it. And so I'm, I'm excited to know that this thing is coming. Coming summers, next summer. So it's a little far off, but I, 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 I'm fine. I can wait. But it's massive, so. It's massive. Exactly. Um, also, when Jared said he played the demo Monster Hunter for a second, I thought he was just calling the, ga- the entire game a demo. For Oof. This. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm such a pro that anything that's not G rate, yeah. G rank is just a demo. You know, I I swear to God, the the way people talk about Monster Hunter Rise, it's like, oh man, this game like there's no content. And while they have like 200 hours in it, yeah. like, there's no content in Monster Hunter Rise. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, solid opener. I thought um, makes mm-hmm. sense, right? This is yeah. a massive game for the Switch. P- probably the biggest exclusive third party game. Not probably, mm-hmm. definitely is. Uh, yeah, makes sense. Okay, well, then I think the, uh, we get Kirby. Yes. Brand new Kirby. <gasps> Kirby. Yes. Brand new 3D, three-dimensional Kirby. Mm. Kirby of love, the Wild I love, is love real. how that rolls off the tongue. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? I know, I know everyone has thoughts on this one. But... Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm, so I'm someone who likes the traditional 2D Kirbys a lot. And um, I'm always kind of worried about, like, 3D versions of, of games. But so far, what they've shown looks really neat and unique, especially in terms of the locale. Um, I think my main thought right now is just glad to see it's 3D and how it works. Glad to see the powers are integrated. Glad to see there is, like, cool, like, lore stuff already happening. And what's going to 
be the question for me is what the actual level design is like when we see more of it later. Yeah, th I think that's going to be a big one, right? Um, uh, I'm, I'm very curious how they end up... Because I think Kirby games are interesting, right? Because I, I, Kirby... I, I feel like, despite being like a platformer that is made for a younger audience, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think when you're good at Kirby, there's a... F good Kirby games have this really strong flow where it's actually really fast-paced, more than you would think, right? <laughs> yeah. Where you're just breezing through the level. Um, I'm curious how they translate that exactly to a 3D space, yeah. you know? Um, be because it did look, I I admittedly, I I'm very excited for this game, I think this, and, and I have thoughts on the, the grander ambition of it that I want to touch on, but since you mentioned level design, I'm, I am a little curious how that will turn out, because it did look a little, like, slow, I guess? It, it looked, at least the initial footage, the, they were more showing off what the game kind of looks like, mm -hmm. um, so... And they didn't show too much at one time. So the, the brief snippets that were there, um, level design and like enemy wise and stuff looked a little barren. But like, I also don't really have any context for those for those clips. Yeah, I feel like it was more like environments and tone and like what the game's generally like. It was definitely one of those like sometimes when Nintendo has those first reveals and they're kind of more just like sort of Here's big what the picture. Game... Yeah, here, yeah, here's what the game is. They right? have a couple of remember like... how remember how bland 3D World looked on the first showing. Yeah, and then trailer two like, just I mean, blows it open. Not right? that this, not that this looked bland. This looked great, but I, I, I think there could be more that more to it. Uh, but what are besides like you know stuff like that that remains to be seen, of course. What are your grander thoughts on this though? Because I think you know ambitious Kirby. That is a thing that is happening. This is a Kirby game with ambition. That's exciting. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I, I will say I used to love Kirby. It was one of my favorite series as a kid. After Squeak Squad, I did not like that game. I stopped playing Kirby for a while. I played the, the two 3DS ones, and I was like, these are fine, but I feel like I'm just done with this series unless they do something big. And this is that. This is them doing something big and bringing me back in. Barry, what do you, how, do you, how do you feel about Kirby in the Forgotten Land? Contrasting Jared's experience a little bit, uh, Triple Deluxe on the 3DS was one of my favorite 3DS games. I think it was my first Kirby game that I really played, um, and I liked it a lot. And this reminds me of that. I think that the environments are translated really well, which I wasn't really anticipating. Because a lot of people have been looking forward to 3D Kirby for a while, and... I certainly was looking forward to 3D Kirby. I was very confident based on the comments made by some of the producers and one of the directors that we would see 3D Kirby soon. Um, and this looks great. It looks it, it looks like modern Kirby in terms of its environments, I feel, translated really quite well. Um, it's got a little bit of 3D world in it, which I think is good. Um, but yeah, I'm, yeah. I mean, uh, is that good? I was also going to say that the movement looks really good, and that's something I haven't seen discussed too much. Yeah. Um, is that the movement looks quite good? It looks very um, fluid. The way that Kirby moves is just like enjoyable to look at, um, and it seems like it feels different it looks like it would feel different from like a mario game it oh it looks like yeah, kirby it looks like kirby you know and i'm impressed by that it's undeniably kirby despite being completely different right and and, and i think that's so fascinating and i want to touch upon you said it looks good to like it looks like it feels good to, right um very pleasant looking um i there was something I that i noticed i don't know why this stuck out to me every time kirby jumps he makes like flip. He flips. He he flips and he makes the most adorable plop sound. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's like a plop. I can't do it right, but it it's it's so pleasing. Yes. <laughs> just mm -hmm. see, just see every time you see him jump. I'm like, oh, I love this guy. The plops <laughs> are actually what I was thinking of. Ah, uh, specifically it, the the ploppiness. I was gonna say ploppiness, but I thought that might be. You can say ploppiness. Yeah. No, yeah. that's what it is. It is ploppy. Kirby's got ploppiness. You know. 
And, uh, it, it, uh, yeah, it, it just makes it really pleasant to look mm-hmm. at, you know? It's it's beautiful game. It's so pretty. I want to oh, say so it pretty. looks... The environments and just the, the way the 3D works, I feel like it looks like a... It reminds me of Mario 64 a lot. Where Mario 64 was 2.5D in the same way that the 3DS games were. But I feel like they, they use the angles a little better. Like, it felt more... Th- 3d weirdly like sometimes it would be like diagonal sometimes you'd like walk through different areas i don't know this reminds me of that i get some some of those vibes with the abandoned buildings and stuff also yeah the the setting also is very unique for kirby right i I, like an abandoned like uh like this place existed went rotted over time and i thought that was a fascinating locale for kirby um Mm -hmm. It's not a dreamland, you know? It's a No. Land. I thought it was kind so. of interesting, like, when the trailer first started. My first reaction was like, oh, Splatoon. And then yeah. it cut to this part yeah. of palm trees, and I was like, Animal Crossing something? And then they showed Kirby, and I'm like, oh, okay. And I think... Oh, this is Kirby. That, yeah, yeah, I was like, okay, I, I already like the distinct visual look for this game compared to other Kirby games. Very much agree. Um, yeah, so Cur- that's coming out in spring. Hey, it's pretty somewhat soon. Kirby's 20- 30th, I think, is in April. Spring breeze. So, yep. would not be surprised if... Hal, Hal has strong anniversary it's brain. so <laughs> April. That's yeah. why I like it, it, Hal so much, is they share my anniversary brain. <laughs> so I got terminal anniversary brain. Yeah, and Hal, Hal very much shares that with you. You know, they love their goddamn anniversaries. So I would not be surprised if it's April at all. I, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, all right. Um, the next kind of big thing that they talked about was Nintendo Switch Online, mm-hmm. the, ex- p- the expansion pack. <laughs> now, first of all, this name. <laughs> I want to talk about the name. God. It, this is so insidious, okay? <laughs> this is... This, and maybe I'm crazy, but... I really feel like this is just like a just enough tugging at the the nostalgia strings and the you know oh you know I remember when I played uh, I don't I don't know did Majora's Mask use the expansion pack I don't know. yeah uh, it yeah it. you know oh I remember when I played Majora's Mask and it had the expansion pack you know oh the fond memories I had <laughs> you know and it's uh, it's so sly you know I, I maybe I'm crazy the but... fond memories <laughs> I had of memory leaks. Yeah. <laughs> of Donkey Kong 64. Like, oh, it came with my Donkey Kong 64, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, so. I'll be honest, I love it, though. I, oh, it's, it's perfect. It's a perfect name. Yeah, yeah. it's a perfect name. It's, it's meant for people like us. Like, yes. uh-huh. you're going to play these old-ass games that are 20 frames a second, and you're going to love it. <laughs> you're going to love it. You're going to love it. And you're going to pay for it. it. You're going to pay more yeah, you're gonna pay for it. Extra you're going to pay extra money for it. You have. Yes. I... So, so it's Let's get into that. Let's 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 because I think that's the biggest thing yeah. here, right? This is an extra tier to NSO. We don't know how much it is yet. Um, Hilarious, but we know <laughs> it will be more. Yeah. Uh, we know that you know. Uh, so, so like what you know, obviously the state of NSO has been off discussed. I think we've discussed mm-hmm. this on this very podcast. Yeah. Right? Uh, but you know, people have you know the last major edition was Super Nintendo two years ago right yeah mm-hmm. we are now two years later we're finally getting something added but we have to pay more for it like what how yeah, do you feel it's, about that it's very it's gross like <laughs> i hope they add i hope they add um game boy to the base tier i would feel better about the paid tier if that was added i think any additions will be in the paid tier i i, yeah. I do not believe mm-hmm. that the base tier is getting any more content because they know enough people have subscribed now i think they have yeah. the numbers to show People want to play their Animal Crossing and their Mario Kart and their Smash Brothers. They're and paying their Splatoon. for online. Splatoon. Sp- yeah. Splatoon you know, they're 3. paying for online. They don't need to convert people anymore. They don't need to convince people anymore. So now it's just about making more money. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I yeah. will say, though, I think Genesis is so disappointing. Like, I I have a Nintendo really? Switch to play Nintendo games. Oh, I want to play the Game Boy. Sure. I want to play oh, the Game Boy Color. I agree. I got the I you can buy the Genesis collection on on the eShop. Exactly. Yeah, you can, though, you can play these games. I will will say regarding the Genesis collection, we're we're pretty sure at this point that it's a uh, M2 handling it and let me tell you that the quality of those releases will be much better than anything on that 
collection that they sold at retail. And like I'm I'm gonna be paying for it anyway, so I'll play these games. Like obviously there's some great Genesis games, Echo so I'll the play Dolphin. them, but like of all the consoles to choose, I think it's disappointing to choose a non Nintendo one before the big Nintendo systems are there. I- I guess I can see that. I think they wanted to go for because I, you know, if you believe rumors, right? Game Boy is going to be on the way, right? <laughs> yeah. And I don't doubt that personally, right? Yeah. But I think it makes sense to go for something more of a surprise. I don't think anyone yeah. was expecting Genesis. No, right? it, was, it was it was it was cool as a surprise. Also, do you know that this is going to be the third, and then soon there will be a fourth way to play Sonic the Hedgehog two on the yep. Nintendo Switch? <laughs> I own two of them already. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna end up owning all four? <laughs> oh my gosh! I probably will. Because <laughs> because that red the, that retro col- that collection that's coming uh, yeah. next year yeah that's so funny. Do do we have a list of the Genesis games? I actually I have like the yes. I, can... I have the N sixty four list internalized. I have. I know the... what those games are. The Genesis ones I. I know the Genesis has Echo the, Echo the Dolphin. There. I have the list right here. Um, I know Echo the Dolphin. Echo the Dolphin sucks. Let's just oh. put that out there. It's a bad game. Okay. So, uh, at launch <laughs> for for Genesis, it's okay. uh, Sonic Two, Streets mm-hmm. of Rage Two, Echo, okay. Castlevania mm-hmm. Bloodlines, Contra Hardcore, mm-hmm. um, okay. Mean Bean Machine, uh, yes, Golden Axe, Gunstar Heroes, Musha, which is the big one for me, um, Fantasy Star Four. Uh, Rise Star, Shining Force, Shinobi Three, and Strider. Okay, uh, you know, so I don't play Genesis. I, I like Sega is such a blind spot. It's a good list. It's a pretty good. So, list. so, so this honestly for me, it's a new experience. So I, I am kind of excited for that. I, I don't touch Sega stuff at all, and maybe I will now because I mean, goddamn it, I'm paying for this stupid thing. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a very um, solid launch lineup for. I would uh, go with the N64 for Genesis. Though. Yeah, let's talk about the the big boy, the N sixty four. Specifically, okay, I, I just want to get straight to this. They announced the launch list, and then they were like, "And soon you'll even be able to play games like F Zero X and Majora's Mask." And then they scrolled through a list, and at mm-hmm. the end, don't ever acknowledge it. But at the end of this list is goddamn Banjo Kazooie, which yeah, is they the knew biggest what they were news. Doing. It was so They're good. The biggest news of this whole thing, and they don't actually acknowledge it, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> yeah, I'm glad for N64 in particular um, that Sin and Punishment is there at launch. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Sin and Punishment, and that's so cool. That. I'm happy to see Dr. Mario 64 since that has not previously been released. Yeah, um, that was never on any virtual console, which is fascinating. Yeah, and um, just to, before we go full N64 here, because I suspect that's what most people want to talk about, uh, just in regards to the Genesis stuff... Um, I was not expecting Genesis either. I was actually expecting uh, Turbo Graphics, um, oh, interesting. which wow. I, cool. I think would have been also really cool because that system yeah. has a very cool library. Um, I would have been more excited for that actually. But, I, but, I, think, but I think Crush. I think Sega makes sense as the first yeah. third person, yeah. though, right? I think, Sega was big on um, 3DS too on the eShop yeah. and the Wii and Wii Virtual or, Console. I, I think Genesis is a great library to include as yeah, part of this really because is. it is one enormous and it's mm-hmm. filled with tons of different stuff and a lot of memorable stuff for me yeah i hope, and I hope it, we get some of the rpgs soon like fantasy star for me like so i'm not really wild about n64 stuff for me what? the thing that was exciting was actually the genesis stuff and seeing musha wow. there day one is just Ugh. such is great it's such a good launch lineup i would say it's actually a stronger launch lineup in the n64 lineup even and that lineup's also very good you're not gonna play Star Fox 64 clay <laughs> yes i i knew that i i was i i i love everyone here knows i love uh Star Fox. i will play the dumb multiplayer in Star Fox 64 on and this now service. you can play it online I, I, yeah. I do think that is a genuine selling point though i want to say i yeah. said that yeah but i i think the, uh, being able to because n64 i think uh, its main identities are like having these revolutionary games, right? But then it's the multiplayer. Yeah, right? it's yeah. absolutely the four multiplayer player, system. Multiplayer, but is... there's there's That's four player system. multiplayer, and they're missing the two biggest games. They don't have Smash, and they don't have Mario Party. Golden yeah. Mario Party, Golden I mean, I mean, what? The fuck? we're never gonna get Golden Eye. F- yeah, but come on, Jared. <laughs> what no, Mario Party? I played so much Mario Party with my with my family. We had so yeah. much fun with that. Mario Party I is actually... big as well. I am optimistic about Goldeneye. Now, Colin, I'm crazy for this. 
right? But here, let me let me do something that no one should do. I'm gonna spin the paid tier as a positive, okay? Yes. <laughs> Boot looking. So, I mean, I'll be honest. I want more systems. I'll pay for them. I just I like being able to play so much stuff on my Switch. I but go on. Make your I make your. I honestly feel like having an extra tier dedicated to retro games. I think makes it easier for Nintendo to pitch to third parties. To be a part of the subscription mm-hmm. service because there's more revenue to share. There's more like you know, uh, it, 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 there's more incentive for for a Sega, for a Pokemon company, for a Rare slash Microsoft to be a part of this, yeah. right? I think they know yeah. GoldenEye is a big draw, and, and I'm not actually expecting GoldenEye, but I, I very much could see it. I, I do think that the paid subscription makes it makes those more premium games that would have never happened otherwise, I think it makes them more likely, honestly. Yeah. It's 2021. We Perfect Dark, though, and Perfect Dark is, like, the multiplayer is pretty similar. For Genesis, it's worth mentioning now, but um, after the Direct, uh, Emily mentioned some stuff that she had heard in regards to some of the NSO stuff. One of the things that she touched on was that Nintendo and Sega are really wanting third parties to hop on for the Genesis um, online stuff, and... I mean, you already have Konami doing it, which is slightly surprising because Castlevania Bloodlines and Contra Hardcore are already in um, Konami's paid collections on the system. Yeah. So I think that may be a, a focus going forward and with N64 as well, just to get, um, you know, some of the bigger third party stuff. And I think what you said about it being a higher tier, um, it does make it more likely for third parties to get a better cut if you will mm-hmm. yeah that, I mean, that is ex- potentially exciting i mean like we see it with game pass right we're like mm-hmm. yeah. you know we're, we're often so surprised at some of the third party content they can get but i mean clearly subscription services are, are are very incentivizing to a lot of a lot of companies right um they can make it happen so i yeah i mean obviously game pass is astronomically more expensive than NSO, but at the same time, I, I assume it's astronomically cheaper to get retro games over <laughs> brand new games. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Um, can we talk about the N64 library? Let's go back to that for a second. Yeah. Okay. There's yeah. some there's some great games on there. Like that, I like I complained about like Smash and Mario Party missing, but there's so much good stuff. Like day one, I'm going to be playing probably Star Fox first. Uh, Mario Tennis is fun. Mario 64 is amazing. I'm so excited to replay Paper Mario. That's one of my favorite yes, I am, games. Paper Mario is a game I will, as soon as it's on there, I'm playing it. Mm-hmm. It's no, not it's coming, it's coming later. It's coming later. But like, that game holds up so well. It really does. I think it's one of the better holding up in 64 games by far. Yeah. like you, It doesn't need a remaster because it just looks so pretty. Like they, It's the almost 2D game. So like nothing that looks bad. I am not a fan of it at all, but uh, a big major game for multiplayer that's there day one is Mario Kart 64. I like Mario Kart 64. I grew up with it. I mm. might just play it I for like the it. for the for the famed battle mode. Right? It's a good battle I, mode. I don't because I don't like Mario Kart 64, but I've not played much of it. But you know, mm. everyone has gone on and about how, how much they love. What is it? For, block. What's the block yeah. fortress? Block. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what it's called on it. <laughs> Block Fortress? Is that yeah. what is I don't, yeah. I think that's yeah. it. People love that stage so much. I hear on and on about how that was the peak of Mario Kart. So yeah, maybe mm-hmm. I'll give it a shot now that I can play it online with people. <laughs> um Yeah, the library is really good. You know, and I mean, man, they I don't like banjo, but that's crazy, right? I love it banjo. Is yeah, crazy but, um, that they call like, banjo. That's awesome. Yeah. I um I'm actually most excited multiplayer wise out of like some of this initial group is uh, playing the Kirby 64 mini games multiplayer because I actually really enjoy those. Oh, okay. Yeah. There, there's some great mini games in there, especially the tile one. Yeah, the tile uh, one. They, the one they I made an eShop game. Oh, flip that Wars. nobody that no yeah that nobody bought that is sort of like the um, Kirby 64 tile game, which is very fun. Yeah. The tile game. I haven't played Flip Wars because nobody has. I think the main thing. I, excuse me, I have. <laughs> I, I think the main thing in regards to this news in general is just nerves or nervous feelings about what the price is going to be, and that they just didn't say it right there. I'm yeah, kind of like, so okay, we're gonna we're gonna find out end of next month, more or mm-hmm. less, right? Because yeah. that's when this thing is launching. That's the yeah. latest that we'll know. 
Uh, I am curious though because you know I surely can't be that much of a price. You guys like, have though, a right? figure in mind? Do you guys have five, five I, dollars? Right. I think ten dollars more. I'm, I'm I'm firmly on the ten dollars. I'm thinking Game it's gonna Pass be double. Ultimate is fifteen dollars. Like, my my instinct. Well, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, should, just be clear. Game Pass Ultimate is fifteen dollars a month, and yeah. Nintendo Switch Online oh, is twenty dollars. Oh, you think it'll be a year? Sorry, sorry, sorry. That makes so much more sense. I was yeah, gonna... yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Nintendo okay, Switch Online I'm is twenty dollars so a year. Right? I think you were saying extra ten per month. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think ten dollars a year. Okay, right? that's totally fair. I think if it's a single, like an individual membership, I could see it being ten dollars more. In regards to the family plan, if there is I a, don't know how they're going to structure family yeah, plan. Yeah, if, if there is, I hope they do the family plan. With if that. there is a version of the family plan with the expansion pack available, my instinct is telling me that the overall family plan would be fifteen dollars more, going from thirty-five to fifty, which to I don't 50. think is that bad considering the family plan option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the family plan is great. It's kind right? of microscopic right. for eight people. Yeah. Yeah. Um. um so would do you think maybe this plan would try to get people off the family plan? Mm, well, it, it kind of depends no, on how it's structured, right? I think right? They, ha they have the family plan because they know like they need further incentivize. Yeah. In incentivizing to pay for this because they know mm. they started from behind here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm sure um, they have data showing how popular the family plan is. My question yeah. in regards to structure is if they'll simply have a version of the family plan with the expansion pack in it, or if the family everyone... plan stays the same and then you individually need to get the expansion mm. pack. Yeah. A question. I want that. I could very much see that. Yeah. Yeah. I um, hope not, but you know, is, who knows? I mean, like I would pay whatever they're going to charge like i, I was going to say question question for the room how much are you willing to pay what is the max i would pay double. five dollars five dollars a month i would double it but that's that's above that i couldn't five dollars wait no five dollars a month is in, is absolutely insane yeah. um yeah that's like a triple pricing <laughs> yeah no i would pay like it's 20 bucks a year right now i would pay an extra 10 or 15. Yeah. I would so I'm willing to pay double so like tw I would pay an extra twenty right mm -hmm. at tw at more than twenty I am more hesitant. However, it loops back around if they're brave enough to charge sixty dollars a year. I'm all for it because that <laughs> oh is so God. stupid. Yeah, that is that, that would be so especially stupid. if it's if it's literally two consoles. <laughs> that would be so stupid that I I would just have to I feel would feel compelled to to applaud their bravery. I know? think. Uh, so I they should have... find a way to add like the the missing NES and SNES games to this. Like, th throw Earthbound in this pack. Who cares? Just I, the Mario I, RPG. Yeah. I, I don't have any thoughts in terms of the individual membership because I've never paid individual membership. I've always done family plan. Um, but yeah, I would say like, you know, my my expectation is that it'll probably be fifty years. So you know, fifty divided by eight is, you know, roughly what I'd be willing to pay and maybe slightly more like maybe 10 bucks at the most in total for in, in a, as a family plan, you know, member with a full family plan. Yeah. Um, but you know, another thing too is um, they've shown Genesis and N64 uh, as you know, they're like, this is the expansion pack, but we also don't know if, you know, you know, maybe expansion pack gets more content later and the price stays the same. I don't know if they're going to try to sell people on the, the future of I, the content I, they add there too. I think they want to keep this, like, just like Super Nintendo got it at later at the same price, I think they'll do the same here with Game Boy. I don't know anything yeah. beyond Game Boy, but I, I strongly believe Game Boy will show up at some point. I, if they're cynical about it, they'll do it in a year when, when resubscribe time comes around. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, I, I love, I, yeah. I do actually believe that when Game Boy slash Game Boy Color shows up, that it will make it to the base tier and that they would put something else in the higher tier. I think it's oh, a... See, I hard disagree. I, I think it... Um, well, I think one thing is that it it continues to enhance the value of the base service. And then meanwhile, the higher tier service is also going to be getting more high value content. So I think it works. Um, but I, I am curious to see how it plays out. My, my hope is that you know, for example, they have Game Boy, Game Boy Color on normal tier, and then maybe they add GBA to to expansion pack. I think that would be that would be a cool trade off to have have three I, forms. Per I took game. Thursday as base tier is done. They'll yeah, keep adding I, NES games. They'll keep adding SNES games, but base tier is 
feature complete. I very much agree. I, I, I am in the same boat. Now, one last thing to talk about NSL. We do got to move on at some point. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. The, they, they're selling controllers. They're yes, selling an N64 yes, they controller. They're yep. selling a Genesis controller. $50 each. Yeah. Now, $50 for a Genesis controller? Brave. Uh, <laughs> and the three button Genesis, Genesis controller. controller. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a terrible controller. Amazing. And then the N64 controller. I kind of want to buy it for the novelty. This is such I'm a I'm going to buy the N64 controller. controller. I'll buy the N64 Fuck one. Yeah. I will not Fuck buy yeah, the Genesis the N64 one. one. Yeah, but the Genesis yeah. one, I'm like, oh, I will <laughs> wait no thanks. for a sale on the N64 controller before I buy it. They've like, done that with the NES and SNES ones. Oh, so. they've gone on sale before? I have yes. Have. I have never held an N64 controller. Neither yes. have I. Really? Well, wow. I, wow. I, okay, maybe I did like as a small <laughs> child because my neighbor had one, but I really, I not that I can yeah. remember I, at all. They're not great, um, but they are authentic. <laughs> I, Hopefully I like them a lot. Hopefully sticks are built better. <laughs> also, I, I hope you know, like... Uh, there's probably a lot of people listening to this who are probably in pain after you said that. <laughs> oh, what the old people? <laughs> the old? Yeah, old, you, uh, old I think, people. I think what we mean are actually the normal age people. The adults, the boomers. <laughs> yeah. do, do you know Raccoon? Mm. Do you know the D-pad on the N64 controller? No, I haven't touched one. It's not. Oh, good. I mean, do you, well, you know it from the videos. Like you've seen pictures. Just, it, you know, it's like it. huge, right? It's like. Well, it's it's on the left side, and yeah. you almost never ever use it mm, mm-hmm. and it's yeah, also I, bad I, I know, except I've in like kirby's pictures of it like guys kirby's i know 64. what the n64 controller <laughs> did you know uh back in 96 hey, have you heard of <laughs> have you heard of the system called the nintendo <laughs> uh, all right well that's enough about nso oh, yeah. um it's more than enough about nso <laughs> more than enough. we could have done a whole damn podcast about that there's other uh, things <laughs> in the show yeah, yeah believe yeah. it or not so uh next big thing splatoon 3 Yes. Um, I don't think we have too much to say about it, but we did see the single player content, which yeah. is important. Return of the Mammalians. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> Very funny. Um, I, this is hilarious. I, I mean, Splatoon finds a way to escalate. I always enjoy that. Um, one quick thing I did notice, though. I feel like... Maybe I'm wrong. I could just be misremembering. But I feel like the environments of hero mode in Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2 were very much like the void yes mm-hmm. right yeah they're very voidy and and, yeah. and this one feels like it has real environments is it yes. just me Did, no uh, no I, I noticed that too yeah it feels i like, like that a lot more. more it has both from what i noticed yeah it still has yeah, some it voids. still has the voidy stuff but it has it has legit environments though yeah like a snow area and some other yeah. stuff the yeah. research antarctic like area looks so good the uh yeah. the thing i liked um and they expounded on this a bit in like the post they put up after the direct but um you know that the salmonid companion that you have the small fry um you need to use them to to eat the uh the ink the fur ink which is the most disgusting oh. thing um <laughs> that's but, upsetting but they but they eat it and like you can use them to clear areas so it's like you kind of have like a it's almost like the way they showed it in the little clip that they had was throwing the salmonid almost like a grenade in the past game <laughs> and they like start like eating the the furry ink um, so I'm kind of wondering if maybe like, I'm, it says they use them to like, you use them to interact with stuff as well. So I'm, I'm guessing a big thing in single player is going to be like tossing that little guy around to do things with. And I'm, I'm kind of curious how that's going to play out. Yeah. So with that Salmonid and, and with the name and everything too, it does feel like, cause Splatoon 2 Hero Mod was very disappointing, right? Because it was just the first game again, basically. I, right? I, I know people have different opinions on that. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I don't think it's as good as the first games, but I thought it was pretty solid. And just them even letting you like use a bunch of different weapons was such a nice improvement. Oh, for sure, for sure. I, I don't want to say it was bad or anything. I think it was good, right? But yeah. I, I just was disappointed in it, right? And then yeah. Octo Expansion quelled a lot of that. Octo Expansion yeah. I loved. But one of the big things I was hoping for Splatoon 3 out of the gate was do something different. Like, even... Yeah. I, I, I Obviously, I want something good, but I want something different. And it yeah. does feel different, right? Thanks to yeah. the Salmonid, thanks to this weird mammalian theme. And um, the whole post-apocalypse stuff. Yeah, which, again... The Octarians... The furry Octarians <laughs> with humanoid, like, <laughs> fucking feet. It, awful. I, yeah. I, I hate them. I do hate them, yeah. <laughs> um, I, one thing to mention, too, is that in case anyone had doubted it or somehow missed it, they are once again have done the the last Splatfest impacted 
um, yes. this game because now we're splat splatlands and this whole area is sort of like the chaos chaotic we're in the city of area. chaos yeah they call it and uh so there's the badlands which appear to be in story mode as well as they specifically called um they had an image with one of those areas that looks kind of like how the hero mode er stages did in one and two um mm -hmm. called alterna that it's a, it is a location within the splatlands so Ooh. kind of curious how that plays out like those two different types of environments and stages playing against each other yeah i'm curious how they how they bring that together also there was like some side scrolling segments right were there i i thought i saw maybe i might have saw that I, but my hope I, I, is that they don't like have it where like splatlands is just the hub and then the actual stages are all alterna i hope there's a bit of mixing with that i see i had the thought i was like so splatoon is very good at like integrating the world into like every aspect of the game yeah. right i think it's so unique in, in in nintendo stable because of that in particular right yeah. they care a lot about the story the world the overall world like everything like that stuff matters in this game there's a continuity a real continuity in splatoon right and i was thinking one of the ways i feel and like the music has context everything has caught everything has context in splatoon, yeah right so oh, i was thinking one of the things that i feel like splatoon 3 could really do that would elevate that for me is if they also gave context to the stages and i think single player would be a really good way to do that i want yeah i want these stages to feel like a a singular world yeah you know I agree. me too um i i think that would be a really good way to take that to the next level you know i i like cohesive worlds and games and connecting stuff much more than like voids or just like random places yeah. yeah um one thing too also that i forgot to mention in regards to splatfest the original final splatfest for splatoon 2 was uh what do you call it the squid sisters versus off the hook and guess who's in who won that and guess who's in story mode <laughs> wait they, they didn't do that did didn't they, they? yeah they no. i'm almost positive they did hang on What's i gotta up? look it up I, well, I I don't think they did. I'll but update maybe, you. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll talk about that. You you can. Yeah, I didn't an see update, either but... of the Splatoon two ones. Uh, the yeah, but we didn't see off the hook though. We did not see yeah. Palmarina at all. I'm very curious what's going on with them. Very I want to know. I love them. I love them. I need to see them. So <laughs> um, but remember yeah, when they so... were Biggie and Tupac? I that? that was wild. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm a real, like, Splatoon casual, right? I see things on Twitter, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. And that was that was definitely that tier of, like, you know, the fuck? You know? And what's, <laughs> awesome. what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, honestly. Splatoon, I th I've noticed, I, I, I do appreciate, because, you know, a lot of times in directs and stuff, I feel like a lot of people, when it's something they don't play, they have the attitude of, oh, don't care, right? Mm. But I feel like a lot of people, when they see Splatoon, they're like, I don't care, but, like, I respect this, you people, know? People perk up their ears at Splatoon. They're like, oh, this it, is weird. This is different, this is, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, it draws you in, even if you have no interest in playing it. Mm -hmm. I am I am nuts. There there was no... I, I could have sworn there was a Splatfest with the two <laughs> versus each other. They did have the race war. Yeah, they did have the race war. They did have the squid right, versus I forgot about the race war. <laughs> that, 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 that did happen. No, yeah. it was the East Coast <laughs> versus the West Coast. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was something. Okay, it, disregard me, but... I, I um, have a preference for the Squid Sisters anyway. That's a so. Biggie Tupac uh, reference for our Shut listeners off. at home. <laughs> for our listeners at home. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, there's probably some people who didn't get that. But <laughs> um, I... Okay, one quick disappointment, though. No release window. Yeah, yeah I thought that was really weird. Right? Is it going to be yeah. late? I was expecting I at least like late. a season... I, I still think it's summer. I think we've all been expecting summer. Splatoon yeah. tends to come summer, right? I My thing, and I think a lot of people, what they've said a lot, I do think Nintendo's still afraid to lock down Windows yeah. in COVID time, which yeah. is fair. I think that's fair, right? And and so I, I think it's still on track for summer, and I think... So I, I don't think that this means it's coming later necessarily, right? But I just think that it just means Nintendo's still afraid to give... I mean, Kirby's in spring, and they didn't want to give that a day. And normally yeah. spring games get dates in the september directs right you know yeah. i actually someone was on the internet somewhere probably the server was spreading fear and uncertainty about kirby coming out <laughs> okay 
that um, uh, you know that's that's a bit much for me <laughs> yeah 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 well a li- i don't know it was like oh it'll be like june or whatever um because they didn't date it but they didn't date it yeah no I, yoshi I, I, yoshi's crafted world got a trailer in the september 2018 direct with spring and then it got a twitter release date for march in so january happen. right like precedent. in january yeah, 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 they were yeah. like hey it's in march yeah mm-hmm. i remember that so we have precedent. And, and yeah there's definitely precedent even before yeah that's even before covid mm-hmm. right yeah and so covid obviously even more they want to lock down the state so that, that makes sense yeah but i, I still wish they at least gave us like weird, a, I, I wish yeah. they gave us a summer at least you know just yeah. a, a season you know yeah i was expecting to nice. see like summer at the very least Splatoon seems to have a somewhat more agile development cycle than mm-hmm. a lot of Nintendo games with the, you know, test trials and shit. So I could see that they don't know. Yeah, they, that's fair. They could very, I, I mean, kind of talking out of my ass, but I could see them shooting for summer, but being prepared for it to not make it. Just yeah, based I, on I, how Splatoon is. Oh, for is. sure. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the very much the case of that. I I think they are prepared for internal delays, probably across the board, honestly, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, so I'm not like too pessimistic yet, but I I, I was bummed. Um, we got another 2022 game though, a generic 2022. Oh wait, game. one the... one quick thing. Um, sure. About Splatoon, we're not going to talk about all the multiplayer stuff, which I thought was cool, but I just wanted to give a nice shout out to the freaking crab tank which looks yes. so yes. freaking cool <laughs> also that like grappling Spider- hook looking yeah, yeah the grapple the hook looks really thing. cool the, as the zip the zip shot i think is what it's called i forget yeah the, 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 the power of the, the specials in this one look wild and I'm, yeah. I'm all for it i'm super into that yeah crab tank main let's go all right and then so we have our big closer bayonetta yes. three um so first of all di- when when did you realize this was bayonetta immediately because i saw yeah. platinum on the building i was like it's bayonetta i'm too <laughs> okay. i'm too online pilled so i was it like was pretty i quick. saw a gun and i was like, i was like this is not three. xenoblade <laughs> so it's probably bayonetta i okay maybe i'm just stupid but i thought i was like when i when i saw that my brain was like is this what x <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, is this, is this like X? Like, I don't know why I thought that, but I, it, I until, at some point I realized it was platinum, but then, but then they were, they started doing the fake outs with Astral Chain stuff too. And I was like, yeah, yeah that okay. fake out was so this funny. Is, there, this is kind was... of, yeah, this is kind of embarrassing, but I, I have to admit it. So, uh, I watched the direct with my sister actually. Um, and at that point with the Astral Chain police dog mascot, um, I turned to her and I was like, is this Persona? <laughs> <laughs> is this Dungan Rampa? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know what the dog was from. Oh, that is so funny. Is this per- that is I recognized so funny. it, but I, I was just like, Persona. <laughs> I can't believe you You were the meme, you know, of I like Persona f- people. Yeah. People like, is this per-? Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> so Beta shows herself, right? Right off the bat, I think they know this was the biggest reveal. This is the first thing we saw. We see Bayonetta's new look. What do you yeah. think? Um, Looks I like it. Um, I have thoughts on that character, <laughs> which I know. I think some, I think a lot of people do. Yeah. Some people have theories about that character, which I uh, I'm agreeing with right now. But I do like the design. I my only problem is I I really I, I'm happy it's a new design I love that Bayonetta does this because you really feel like it's a sequel when the character the main character mm-hmm. is completely different yeah right? um and but you know Bayonetta two Bayonetta to me is just perfection though same you know? mm-hmm. that is yeah, such that was an a great excellent one. design but I as, still do like this one as I the, still do like this one as the gayest one here Bayonetta two Bayonetta is actual perfection in a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Just want right, that for yeah. the record. Just, just for the yeah, it's out now. It's uh, notarized, but uh, I, I still do like her look. Um, I, I think it's good. But yeah, uh, you know, people are thinking this is not Bayonetta. Yeah. What, what do you, what do you think about that? Think? Not, not the normal Bayonetta. Not the normal Bay- it's ba- it's Bayonetta. It's a Bayonetta, but you know, um, is I Bayonetta like the hero of time? No, Maybe. it's there's, more there's like <laughs> there's there's some story shenanigans basically, but hmm. essentially you should just know Bayonetta story is yeah bonkers and it, it is impossible to actually follow. But yeah. basically, there's there's a little girl who's Bayonetta. 
um, who shows it's it's a con- whatever. Uh, uh, but yeah, so there's a lot of theories about that floating about. Um, they also showed they wanted to make you know this game is real. This is a real video game. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So real that's true. Video game. I, I, I really appreciated that. I think because I, I think they knew Bayonetta three needed this. There was mm-hmm. a lot of despair about this video. It game, did, yeah. Right. This game was announced four years ago, and we have not seen a lick of a thing since then. So th- they they came in with this mission statement that did we are going to prove. Four uh, years ago. Four years yeah. ago, twenty seven December twenty seventeen. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Ima- yep. Oh Imagine if this was the reveal of Bayonetta three. <laughs> Yeah, but they had it, never mentioned it. We, yeah, we we went four years without hearing about Bayonetta three, and and, and so that's what and the, the, the goes to show you right. They had to do this right. They had to show Bayonetta three. We promise this is a real video game because a lot of people were feeling despair over it, and I think understandably so, right? Yeah, I think um one one thing I just want to point out immediately, um I know there was some some talk about this compared to a certain other project yesterday but the big thing that stuck out for me with band of three was the giant like being able to control the giant demons i love that yes so you can actually control the demons that she summons and i because i was wondering because i i clay you've played bayonetta two, yeah one and two i don't know if the other two of you have i have yeah i've but beaten two i've played most of one bayonetta two i thought did a really good job bayonetta two is about escalation. Yeah. Right? Right off the bat, it's already bananas, and it just goes from there, right? Yeah. It, it is just continuous escalation. So I was really racking my brain. How do they escalate further if that's what Bayonetta is about? They found a way. Yeah. <laughs> right? oh, yeah. They found a way. Like, like, this, it's, it's, it, being able to control the demons is, is crazy, right? Yeah. It's it looks like, very a cool. Kaiju action <laughs> going on. Oh, yeah. And I know some I'm people, curious. some people immediately were like, scale bound. And like, yeah, I, I can understand that. Well, but yeah. Well, people said those mechanics were from scale bound. Yeah, like literally a guy who used to work at Platinum was like, hey, a lot of this reminds me of the stuff we were working on scale bound. Yeah. And I believe the director of Bayonetta 3 yeah. was like a lead designer, I think, on scale bound. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah so, so it is surprise. I mean, if you think about it, like, Bayonetta 3 was greenlit around the time it was announced, right? in that 2017 period. Scalebound was cancelled the beginning of that year. It doesn't surprise me that then that the Scalebound team is the one who, you know, moved on to Bayo 3. I mm-hmm. think that makes sense. I, I think That's it a also really makes cool sense thought. The, the stuff that they did have that was working for Scalebound be reappropriated in, in a way that makes it, sense. In, mm-hmm. Yeah, in a way that, like, actually, yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, Bayo 3 looks great. It's a real game. It's coming out next it year. It looks super fun. Looks super. Like, and does not oh, look like a PS2 game. Just for no. Anything. Looks like a Nintendo Switch game. <laughs> Stop this! Stop yeah. this! this <laughs> garbage. Yeah. Okay. I, and in terms, just real quick, in terms of that, um, the uh, the game, you know, obviously, may, maybe some people felt it didn't look as good or whatever. I I do have to remind people yet again, and this happens every single goddamn game. This game is not out until twenty twenty two. The polish phase usually happens towards the end. I really do not believe that the game that we're looking at right now is going to be identical to the game that comes out. Yeah, I mean, this happens every time, right? Yeah. Like, Nintendo games, every... Like, when are we going to learn our lesson with this, man? Like, Even still Legends... Needs to be said. Like, Pokemon Legends looked like shit at the beginning of this year, you know? It looked so bad. <laughs> and yeah. It, it looked so much better in September, Right? Like, it, this always happens. We fool ourselves every time. This is how it goes. Hey, hey, hey. Speak for yourself. I never fool myself, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> um, Alright, so that was the big stuff, mm-hmm. right? But believe it or not, there was a lot more than just the, those yeah. five There things. was more? That was the, the big yeah. video game stuff. Those were the big video game stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Before we get to some of the, 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 the biggest... <laughs> in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I do want to talk about... So, kind of the structure of a Nintendo Direct, right? And I'll I say even more for it at the end, but I think Directs in the modern Switch era... I, I've been thinking about why do they work, right? Because you look at Nintendo... They do three big shows a year, essentially. The big-ish, right? But still, right? But And they're pretty much all well-received, generally, right? Um, 
and then you look at, and I don't want to listen to a console war thing, but you, you look at like a Sony event, they do one a year, and that one a year is not as well received, right? So I wonder about that, like, you know, Nintendo does these three shows, and how, what, what makes it work? And one of the things that I really settled on was how much they put a focus on what's coming soon. And when I say soon, <laughs> I mean soon, yeah. right? So right off the bat, they, they shadow dropped a demo for a brand new game called Voice of Cards. They shadow dropped Deltarune Chapter 2, which only came out on PC six days ago, right? Yep. They shadow dropped Act Razor Remake. They shadow dropped Renaissance or whatever, right? Um, uh, Castlevania Advance Collection. Yeah. Arcade Archives Pac Man and ZBR. <laughs> I don't know if this before, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and a Mario Golf update. Now, hmm. now I want to talk about some. So we can talk about some of these games in more detail, but the fact that, like, right off the bat, they shadow dropped all of that the day of that direct, right? And then announced a bunch more coming soon, like, in literally October. Like, that Voice yeah. of Cards game that they put a demo out for, that's out next month, yeah. right? And I it, think, um, what, like, Shadowrun Trilogy and Die, Dying Light are also, like, within the next couple of months? Within the next, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, it, it, you know, KOTOR is in November, right? Yeah. Disco Elysium is in October. Like, they do a really good job of making you feel like ov- almost overwhelmed with the amount of games that are just playable soon. And no, you're not interested in everything, right? But the idea is with the, just the by sheer quantity, you are surely interested in one of these. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I, I think the big difference between I feel like we've mentioned this before, but the big difference between Nintendo than the other uh, two is that they do a lot of smaller stuff. So at like a Sony event, if you don't like one of the big games revealed that's that's a lot of the year at a nintendo event if you don't like a few of the games it's okay there's more common like yeah right it's, it's just a faster clip of release since they're smaller since they have smaller stuff as well as the big games and, and like just, the wild and and just generally with a few like strategic exceptions most games being announced within like this six to eight month period before release helps a lot as well Oh yeah, like right, like like the games they announce, they end up it comes like relatively soon, right? Like yeah. you know, obviously there's exceptions to that, but like like Kirby, Kirby came is announced, it's coming out, it'll be out within like at a maximum nine months if that June guy is right, right? Yeah. Like even then, nine months is the worst case scenario for Kirby. That's not that's not bad at all, right? Um, so those shadow drops, anything that stuck out to you guys that you're like, oh man, yes, or or even the stuff that's coming out soon, yes. Shout um, at me. What, what do you what, what do you I, do? I'm going to cover it now because I'm probably going to forget later. Uh, the Mario Golf update, I tried it last night. If you have not tried it, I would recommend it. If you have not picked up the game because you didn't think there was enough, I would say now there's enough. Um, so it adds two full 18 whole courses um, in a single update. It adds two new characters, which are Koopa Troopa and Ninji. And also, very importantly... Um, starting next month it basically fixes every issue that people had with ranked mode um in uh mario golf so to quickly say um the ranked mode now if people would try to like generate points by doing nothing by just kind of like hitting the ball until they had a forfeit and they would still get points anyway the the change makes it so that doesn't happen anymore um, and it also makes it so that special shots are not on in regular golf anymore because people would also kind of wait around to use those after other people shot the ball to win. So I think that is just going to become much more fun soon. But I'm more, more than anything, I'm just amazed that they dropped two full courses. Two courses? Yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a big update. Yeah, it's, it, that's it's huge. I mean, so the game launched with six, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And so now they've added three more. They've added 50% more courses. Yeah. And, and not you know? to mention, this. I don't believe this is the case with the two they added recently, but New Donk has Amateur and Expert, which is are two completely two different, different courses. Two different courses. Oh, yeah. wow. That's, yeah. that, I didn't know about that at all. Yeah, that's only so, for New Donk. But, um, mm-hmm. and, I mean, yeah. this is a game that launched, I thought, disappointingly, but I really, honestly, I'm already feeling like they've made up for it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's been very quick after launch that they've added a lot. And, and also, too, just to point this out real quick, um, with the exception of the 3DS version, uh, which had some paid DLC, um, this Mario Golf now has the most 
holes out of any Mario Golf game. Wow. Oh, wow. That's impressive. Yeah, with the, the exception uh, the, of the 3DS version, if you include the paid content. If you include the DLC. And, but and do, you and, think this is, do you think this is the last DLC? Absolutely. No, not. no, because wow. I feel like they would have said... They, Nintendo's mm-hmm. been really good about letting us know when it's like a final update, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A final content update, at least. And, and, and yeah, so I don't, I don't think I don't think that Mario Golf is ending anytime soon. At least wow. I hope not. Yeah, um, that's, that's great. And so you know the fact that it's already grown to be this pretty big game, like it, it does, it makes me feel like okay, you know what, like it th- those disappointments I had at launch, uh, they've already kind of mitigated a lot. Yeah, you know? yeah, I would agree. The only thing um, I need to see now is more battle golf stuff, but that's another thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh. Any other games that, you, uh, from, that are coming real quick or already are out? <laughs> uh, yeah, it? I'd like to talk about the Castlevania Advance Collection. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Aria of Sorrow is the first Castlevania game I've ever played. I loved that game so much. It was one of my favorite Game Boy Advance titles. I didn't get as far in the other two, but that's... I heard it's $20. So like, that's, yeah. that's a lot of great games. $20 for, for that is a... a it's, it, that's very, so worth it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, it is M2 who did it, who handled the GBA mm-hmm. Virtual Console, um, and they also handled the uh, Castlevania Anniversary and Contra Anniversary collections. And they even included an encyclopedia and a music player for all four games. Oh, that's amazing. That's so oh, worth great. it. That's, that's a great collection. And one little thing here that was talked about last night is you can change the audio like the game audio to high quality so that it doesn't have the gba hissing oh wow I, yeah I, oh that's hmm. that's that is that's a good i, I could wow. be i could be incorrect on this but i believe the Mega Man zx and zero collection had a similar feature uh uh-huh. don't quote me on that 100 percent, but i just love that that's here that uh, is fantastic because you know the gba sound chip is notorious for being awful right? yeah um but that, that's really good news. A lot of um, love and care. I've never played these Castlevania games. I stopped, I, I did a whole run-through of, like, the first couple games, like, one through Rondo of Blood a couple years back, uh, and then I just stopped. But I really should play more of these, and I'm like, yeah. oh my, I, these are all new games to me, so this is this is a fantastic collection. Yeah, and yeah. these are all the exploration ones. Yeah, these are all the, the, the more Metroidvania type of yeah. Castlevania games. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and so, Dracula X for whatever reason. For some yeah, reason, it's a weird addition, but cool. Man, Ron, but like Rondo of Blood, this is—it's just the worst Rondo of Blood. It is mm-hmm. a different, worse Rondo of Blood. Yeah. And I'm like, can you free Rondo of Blood from PlayStation, please? Your <laughs> can I, you, I can hope you, we get a DS collection at some point. Can like, you make Rondo and Symphony available on other? Time? Yeah, and I would love a DS collection. I think it, I, I think it'll, I think Advanced Collection is going to sell a lot, and I think that they will do a DS collection for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm excited to play these. Um, anything else? I know I have a couple. But yeah, I, yeah, I have one, but I'll let someone else go first. Barry? Uh, yeah, Barry? Uh, I'll hop in and say that I have yet to get a chance to play Deltarune Chapter 2. Ooh. No spoilers, please. So I will yeah. be playing it on the Nintendo Switch. I would like to play Chapters 1 and 2 on my Nintendo Switch. I started 1... But wanted to wait for the full game, but Mm-mm. it it's like there I is no such thing. Yeah, there is no <laughs> such thing. I, I should just play it. Yeah, no, I, I that's the one I was gonna bring up, Barry, as well, because I, you know, I played Chapter One on Switch, right? Um, and so I was gonna wait for the Switch version, and I was fully prepared to wait a couple months because you know the first one took four months, right? The fact that this thing is out in six days after its original release, I was, yeah. I, I, so hype. <laughs> one of the biggest moments of the direct. Yeah, for opinion. sure. When for Toby sure, Fox but... came out in his dog suit. Toby Fox came... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was incredible. <laughs> and I believe uh, Japanese Indie World had an interview with him go up live at the same time as well. So. Oh, I didn't check that out, but I, I definitely want to because to- we, we love Toby Fox here. We, yes. we are. This is a Toby official... Fox household. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited to play Chapter 2 now because, you know, avoiding spoilers has been so hard. It's so hard. <laughs> so I'm I, I'm ready to dig into this, pro- honestly, tonight, probably, <laughs> as soon as we're done recording this podcast. Um, so it's very exciting. Um, I guess I wanted to bring up ActRaiser. Yeah. I know Clay is super into this. I So I know ActRaiser is very, like, uh, it it is very like cult. This is a this is what a cult classic is, right? Um, 
Clay, you want to tell me a little bit about it? Why, why, why are you excited for this? So, I'm going to preface this with the first time I ever saw... I'm, I'm dating myself again. The first time I ever saw Act Razor was when it was featured on Nick Arcade. <laughs> <laughs> because it was. And I... I, I I so, so this game is such a weird merger of stuff. So like you have the, it's called the simulation mode, which is like a top down, and it's literally like it's a god game. You have like the civilization that you need to kind of like, you know, protect. And basically, there's these like temples that are scattered throughout the world that are the houses for these like evil things. So you you play in simulation for a bit and make sure that stuff is cool, and eventually you get led to a temple. And once you get to a temple you become the mortal personification of God, who is not Jesus, um, <laughs> uh, as this sword-swinging, like, monster. And you go through side-scrolling levels. Um, and uh, it's just such a weird blend of, of game, but it has an amazing soundtrack by uh, Yuzo Koshiro. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a very, it's a unique game. The se- It had a sequel, which removed the simulation elements, um, and it's generally considered not as good um, as the original. The original is just such a, a special and weird game. I, I I honestly I did not know anything about it, but I just hearing about it was like I was like so fascinated by it. I was like, oh, ooh. yeah. Uh, this game, obje- this is a Renaissance version though, objectively yes. disgusting. I think, <laughs> but I am, <laughs> I'm so fascinated by it though. You know, I'm like. I've heard some people like the visuals. Like I think I think it looks hideous, but yeah, I, there's there's I don't know why, but it strongly appeals to me. I'm like I don't know what it is. It, it's <laughs> sort of the elephant in the room that we're yeah is that the visual style for this remake is weird. Um, it I think so. I've seen some people really like it. I've seen most hate it. I personally do not like it. Um, but it's kind of like that weird like ps1 pre-rendered sprite look um i guess and, yeah and yeah. i saw some people compare it to ghosts and goblins resurrection but i actually disagree on that one no that it's, not, it's nothing like that very though. pretty it's not no, that's a good looking that. game um but yeah it's it's kind of weird it looks kind of jank um and that's kind of the, the issue that i have with it right now but they did add new stuff and one of those things is that on top of the original soundtrack Yuzo Koshiro has made a new arranged soundtrack and some new songs in general because the game has an extra um, area uh, and it also adds this sort of tower defense style thing to the simulation mode where you have to defend um, the civilization which was not in the original. Um, That's amazing to add things the to soundtrack, the game. Well speaking of the soundtrack though, did you hear what he did for the soundtrack? He was uh, he he'd had he had the SNES tools set up because he had just yes. done something was it like he, the he VTuber just, thing he did something for some VTuber and so so he uh with the with that so so since he already had that on hand like so he composed the new tracks made in mind for the Super Nintendo and yeah. then also made like you know higher quality or whatever versions of it so like even the the new tracks have like a Super Nintendo style. Yeah. of a soundtrack in there which i think is so cool you yeah. know and the, the fact that it was desi- it was made in mind first for the super nintendo even yeah. though it's like new tracks i think th- 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 this is so neat you know and and uh, one other thing too on that note is i haven't seen it talked about very much but they do have an early purchase bonus for act Razor right now um that and this is on any of the systems that it's on if you buy it before november 1st uh you get a wallpaper which who cares but you do get a mini soundtrack uh, sampler of sorts. It's like, I want to say five tracks, two to five tracks. Um, and if you get it on PlayStation, you get a theme as well. But everywhere else does have the wallpaper and more importantly, the mini soundtrack sampler, if you are interested in that. It is 30 bucks, uh, the game. So I, I do feel like it was a little expensive, but I know it is a remake, though. It's, it's I think they're it, adding a lot. I think and it they, makes yeah, it's sense. a lot. So, like, yeah. It's, again, it's, it's similar in price to actually it is the same price as ghosts and goblins resurrection granted that is a straight up sequel as opposed to a remake but i don't think it's a wild i just hope that it gets a a physical release because that's what i'd be interested in 
knowing me. I yeah yeah you know I know you love your physical releases. Um, and I, I hopefully it comes, but you know obviously shadow drops uh yeah. inherently are gonna be digital first. I man, I love a good shadow drop. Same. And this had this had many a good shadow drop. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's one I'll just give one sentence on. I think it's really cool that Kotor is coming. Like it's yeah. not for everybody. It's a very old game. It feels old, but it's there's some cool ideas there, and the stories are still interesting if you like Star Wars. I, I, I thought it was it funny. funny. Cause I, cause I, I was watching Maximilian's like reaction to the direct, and he was like, you know, it's really funny. Like Sony's getting Kotor to remake, and <laughs> we're getting just original ass Kotor. Which is yeah, funny. in the same month, in the same month, Sony holds holds a presentation that they're getting a full ass next gen remake, and then we get a twenty year old port, which I like. I'm happy about, but it's just it yeah. is so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, is funny. it is really funny. Um, yeah, and I, I, I um. And you know, it, I it's just like man. I want Castlevania. I love. I want Akrazer. I want. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I, I, I'm gonna play Delta and I'm just like, yeah. oh, there's so much. Who has time? Um, who has time? <laughs> I certainly do not. Or money. <laughs> or the money for honestly. I'm still playing Skyward Sword over here. <laughs> I also want to download. That yet. I yeah. I I know. First of all, this year said so much, right? I also really want to play. So, Voice of Cards, the Isle Dragon mm. Wars. Mm. I they they dropped a demo for it. I was really interested in it because it was funny. I was watching it in call with someone else, right? And the trailer's playing, and he's like, you know, um, this, this, this game very inspired by Nier, right? Uh, yeah. He almost calling it a Nier knockoff. And then it was like, oh, this is by Yoko Taro, <laughs> and the composer's Okabe, and, you know, and it's like, <laughs> oh, it sounds like Nier because it is Nier. <laughs> Yeah, I'm um, not someone who generally likes card games, but I found the concept for this one interesting. I'll, yeah, I'll probably it, end up downloading the demo just to see it. Can't hurt, right? Yeah, and, and it's a de- like the fact that it has a demo is nice. It's coming out very soon though, for yeah. to not even know it existed, and then it's out in October. Like what the is hell? Is it the same day as Mario Party? It, it's the same day as Mario Party. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so I can't get it. I'm yeah. too busy playing Mario Party. But same. that's actually something I also when we're done with voice cards, Mario Party is the last one I had as well. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, <laughs> Mario Party. What do you what do you thoughts on Mario Party? Well, they show the last few boards. Mm-hmm. Um, we knew Woody Woods, even though they didn't officially announce it. Yep. But uh, uh, the last two are Yoshi's Tropical Island and Horror Land, which I think are two I love Horror good Land. And, more, and also, they, they highlighted that during the direct, but post-direct, the full site went up for Japan, and it has the full list of all 100 minigames. Oh, wow. And uh, so I went through them. Um, and honestly, with a few exceptions, they kind of nailed all the picks. Mm. Like, there's only a couple, like, there were three games I thought of that I wish had been in, had been included, and everything else was just kind of like, yeah, it was it was it was. What specific. are the what are the three? So spoilers for anyone who doesn't want to know uh, or is going into this blind. Um, th- the three that were missing that I was disappointed with were one Aces High from Mario Party Three, the mm, dog fighting fantastic. one. Fantastic, yeah, yeah. Um, two Fish Upon a Star is not there. Um, I don't know that one. That one is like one of those like combat ones. You're like on a floating star chunk, and you have to knock people off the edge. There are at least Which game was that from? I want to say it's five or six. Oh, okay. Could be okay. seven. I don't remember. They'll kind of blend together for me. There are at least like similar games to that in there, though. Um, and then the last one that I thought was disappointing that, that wasn't there is uh, Goomba Bowling. Um, I feel like that <laughs> would have been the Classic, strongest yeah. pick from Mario Party 9. But beyond that, oh, okay. they have like everything there. And they have this Mount mini game mode that they talked about. And it has seven different modes in it. Um, they mentioned mm. survival in the direct, um, and I think the two versus two one. But there's actually a, a bunch of different types, and they are on the Japanese website. Um, there's you know there's a mode for getting the most coins with the coin focus mini games. There's a sports and puzzle category, which sounds like it's not the normal mini games. It's like maybe extended versions of them, kind of like you know how Mario Party has had extra mode and stuff in the past. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of curious how that plays out. But uh, in any case. Um, I'm excited. I think it looks like a good package. I, I do wish there were more boards. I hope maybe we get like one or two as an update or something, but yeah, the mini games great boards are, are a little low. I would yeah. love DLC and but this seems like the first Mario party I'll get since eight. I, I feel like it, even if they just had like a second board from party three as well, yep. that would have been fine. Like Waluigi yeah, Island. It's so or something. weird. Three but... got 
three got like a little bit pushed to the sideline. Yeah, but I, I'm gonna yeah. go on record, uh, despite uh, uh, you know, I, I against my I, against uh, uh, common sense that this will get DLC. I I'm a believer. I am a believer that Mario Party Superstars will get downloadable content, okay? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm willing it into existence. That's fair. I mean, hey, they added online to Super. Yeah. So yeah. Anything is possible. Yeah. Anything is possible. The, the site has only mentioned the Mount minigame mode and the standard board game mode so far, which we knew this was a focused, more of a focused game um, coming in, but I am wondering what else might be there. there. There's some other minor things that are on the website that I won't talk about. But there's those are the two main things here. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe there's anything else or if there isn't. Um, but either way, the lineup looks great. I'm looking forward to playing it. And online with suspend online is great. With suspend, ah, oh, what a great yeah, game. that's so cool. I I can't wait to play that with people, with both my family and people from the Nintendo Pipeline Discord. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so... Uh, one more game, sorry. Yeah, absolutely no. Go ahead. We have to mention Chocobo Racing. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 we're oh my get there god. Later, yeah, sure, yeah. Chocobo Racing. Yeah. I can't believe I forgot. It's yeah. been an hour and we haven't brought up Chocobo Racing. They're doing a Final Fantasy kart racer. It looks Do so funny. Do you know how funny, just inherently funny it is to reveal this game, the first person you see is Chocobo, of course, right? Yeah. And immediately the second character... <laughs> Is Gilgamesh. <laughs> this is so that's the funniest thing to me. <laughs> they go straight into what an escalation. Yeah. <laughs> like, like... <laughs> this game has been like kind of in the works for like a decade now. It, it seems really? like. Really. Like I, I it was know, like I originally no coming. I mean, you can you can tell that it's been worked on for a decade by looking at it. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it was originally coming to other systems, if I remember correctly. Uh, at one point, it was planned for 3DS, and then that didn't come, didn't happen. Um, and then it was like, you know, trademarks and like rumors again for years. And now finally it shows up. And as soon as it shows up, the immediate reaction is, why is this just Mario Kart? <laughs> the, I, I just thought this trailer was so funny. You know, yeah. I was, I was so enthralled by it. I'm kind of interested in it. Well, it, it um, yeah. It I looks know. a bit like jank. racers enough, maybe. It, it looks a bit jank. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I'm a little it does. worried, but, and I'm not sure about the track design, but they managed to pull off a, a solid, you know, racer here. Just like the recent uh, Cruise and Blast, I, I think this will be just a, a fun game to grab that maybe when it's on sale or, or whatever. Um, yeah, for sure, yeah. It's just one of those games in the directs that are, like, so random that just kind of make you smile, that, like, come out of nowhere. <laughs> um, and that was, that for me, that was one of them, was just Chocobo GP. I'm like, that's great. <laughs> Fantastic. We're all for it. Um, Sorry, I move on now. <laughs> I, I wanted to touch on another trend in this direct, and that was announcements of announcements. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So they went in and they were like, "Hey, before we show the Koizumi was like, before we show this trailer, uh, we got it. We got to talk about something. The final, the final Mister Sakurai presents <sighs> is airing in two weeks, and that's where you're gonna get the final character. We're not showing it today. We're showing it in two weeks." Yeah. Uh, right? And they did something similar for Animal Crossing. They did this one was more of a trailer, right? They do yep. but they do a little thing, uh and, and then we see the roost. The the thing that I think that's the thing that a lot of people have been wanting. Yeah. Right. But it it's a lot more than that. It's like, hey, we're doing a whole ass Animal Crossing direct sometime in October. Yeah. Um, which I thought was fascinating. Um but both of these games have big enough audiences for their own specific oh, events and that's, for that's cool. sure. Yeah. I but I do have a nice, question, yeah. for, and, and I think this applies to both of them. Hmm. Does this raise your expectations for the contents of both of these things? Um, Exponentially. It raises Animal my Crossing, e yes. Smash. To no. an unrealistic yeah. degree. <laughs> I, it raises my expectation for Animal Crossing. It doesn't raise my expectation for Smash Bros. It's just that instead of revealing the character before the in-depth thing, you're just doing it all at once. Um, and yeah. I think it's expected that the last character would be kind of like a dramatic reveal, regardless of who it is. Um, but Animal Crossing, coupled with the news that went live after the direct that there is a fifth set of amiibo cards, 
Um, yeah, that was surprising. That is I did not expect big that. News. Definitely oh. getting new villagers. And it reminds me already of the Welcome Amiibo <laughs> update. Yeah, oh my I god. Mean, that... I hope they add the Puzzle League game back. I I'm glad you mentioned Welcome Amiibo. I think that's everyone's base level expectation now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think people want something the size of Welcome Amiibo. I think it has to be the size of Welcome Amiibo, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Right. So so here's um, a question though in regards mm -hmm. to that. So they mentioned they showed the roost and they mentioned that the free update was coming in November. Does anyone think that some of the contents they show in this direct will be paid? Ooh. Yes. I am of the belief that yes. I yeah. I, I do agree with that. Um, I, I want to say yes, but everyone I watched the direct with said no. Yeah, I I'm curious how that will go over if it is indeed Paid. Well, I think it's I, I think it's smart to get out of the way that the roost is free though, because that's yeah. something that everyone wants, and 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 quite frankly, locking that behind a paid thing would have been yeah. Shit. Yeah, I think right. I think any paid feature needs to be something that's not in an old Animal Crossing already. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think um, well, I I'm very curious. I I so so we all kind of agree then, huh? That it's gonna be a paid thing. That there's um, some sort of paid element. I'm not. Uh, I'm not convinced, I'm not, yeah, I'm not but I think sure. it's possible. Okay fair yeah I, I i'm very curious I, I mean regardless though i i i'm good either way i just mm -hmm. want a substantial update i don't care how yeah. that substantial update comes but i just want a substantial update yeah right? i stopped playing months ago i need a big update together the, the last thing i did was boot it up on new year's eve yeah, uh, me too oh. like the, that, I... that is the last thing i did yeah I you guys are out week? to get the new i come back for the uh the the seasonal items mm -hmm. But I have like three hundred hours in this game, so if they were to release a paid expansion, I could not, in good faith, say, "Man, I really didn't get enough out of the main game." <laughs> buying, yeah. expecting me to pay for this is ridiculous because no, yeah. not really. It's my most played Switch game by a mar by a large margin. Uh, Raccoon, what were you saying before that? That's a great question, Jared. When I we am. were talking about New Year's. <laughs> Oh, you said we were out, out. Like, yeah, you were surprised yeah, was... at how, just how out you and I were. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because even I'm not that out. I mm. play occasionally, you know? No, I'm much more yeah. of a casual. Funnily, in this sense, and Animal Crossing casual is defined as I, I have 150 hours, and that's casual, you know? I have 80 uh, hours. <laughs> wow. Absolute cretins, Animal Crossing. Peasants. Yeah. I mean, Child yeah. numbers. I mean, we cut, we said it with Monster Hunter, right? But it was, it's the same thing here, right? Where it's like, it's this, it's, it, it, there's just this really funny conversation around this game where it's like, people put so many hours and they're like, not enough content. And that's yeah. not to say the criticism aren't valid, but it's just an inherently mm -hmm. funny thing. Yeah. yeah right? Like, 80 hours is so much for me like i don't play games one game that long yeah absolutely so that, that's a ton for me I, I, yeah, yeah it's like 150 hours that's like a rarity for me so like i i'd be mm -hmm. lying if i said i didn't get my money's worth out of yeah that, right? <laughs> yeah you know? but but i do want a reason to come back i love animal crossing i really do mm -hmm. and so I, I i want them to pull me back in so i hope this is big and I, and and because you know if it wasn't big this could have been a, like most yeah. animal crossing updates have been twitter drops right yep um, the fact that this is not just a Twitter drop, the fact that this is a full-on direct, th there is a level of expectation here that I hope they can meet. Yeah. And the last substantial, like, substantial update was diving, and that was, like, a month after release, wasn't it? Well, it was, a, it was like, the first summer, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and also, worth mentioning, too, they did have a direct for Welcome Amiibo, which showcased yeah. that game's new yeah. features. Yeah, Welcome Amiibo is awesome. It has Puzzle League in it. I do like better than that. Welcome Amiibo. I'm I'm sad that it kind of released at the time that it did when I was kind of done with New Leaf. I still yeah. played with the contents in it, but I feel like yeah. I would have gotten much more out of it. I mean, it came out when I was done with the 3DS. Let alone New yeah. Leaf. Honestly, yeah, I'm, yeah. I might play New Leaf again someday. That was a great game. I loved Puzzle League minigame, by the way, just to mm -hmm. echo that. Yeah. <laughs> but I can probably <laughs> promise that we'll have an episode dedicated to Animal Crossing. Oh, um, we'll, we'll have episodes for Smash Update. For Smash, and, and, um, yeah. yeah. So, well, it, don't, those... don't worry. And probably <laughs> but, when, more Animal the, Crossing thoughts. when the paid tier goes up, I'm sure there'll be an episode for that, too. <laughs> oh, definitely. We'll have our NSO thoughts. I'll talk about... Um, Star Fox 64 for Talk about how dog shit the online performance is. And shit. <laughs> <laughs> Though, I think I, someone said this yesterday, and I don't know if this is accurate or not, so I'd, I'd like to hear if 
you guys have heard anything about this, but someone claimed that the version that the online like mechanism that they use for NSO is built off of ARMS's online, and I found that very strange. Uh, and someone said there was rollback. rollback though. Yeah, rollback. someone said it was rollback yeah. built off of it ARMS. Is rollback. I don't know uh, about wait. ARMS. I don't know about all about ARMS, but it is rollback. Yeah, wait, ARMS for is real? Online is very good. Yeah. It's rollback? ARMS is rollback. ARMS is rollback, and so is NSO. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. wild to me. Oh, yeah. interesting. I, I had some good experiences and some bad I, experiences playing any, online. Anytime I played with someone in the United States um with decent internet i had a good time with that as well yeah but yeah. i tried playing with people more internationally it was a disaster but that's i guess to be expected right yeah i mean um, i tried playing clubhouse games not on ms nso but like clubhouse games with someone from australia it was unplayable it was absolutely unplayable yeah and that's a turn-based game mostly yeah I, but- um, but to circle back, I did. I thought the announcements were the announcements. I thought they were smart, though, to be honest. Because mm-hmm. oh, yeah. I know some people can roll their eyes at that. But, you know, Smash and Arm Crossing are both things that can hold their own. And quite frankly, I appreciate them not taking up time to interact. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Even though I like both these games, right? Yeah. But, I, I, yeah, I, I want a deeper dive on these things, you know? Mm-hmm. And the Smash character is one. We didn't cover that at all. But, you know, there is a pomp and circumstance to it, right? Yeah. That... I feel like it'd be doing a disservice to just show off the final character without even giving any lead in, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I definitely, um, I think that I thought that was a good idea. And they I, need room to breathe, and either one would take over the conversation if for sure. And now, that presentation is forty minutes long, by the way, for the final oh, character. So it's yeah, as long that, as this direct. It's gonna be as long as this <laughs> entire direct. Holy so, shit! So I mean, I'm not saying like, oh yeah, they're 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 gonna be like psych, you know, fighter pass three or whatever, but. I am curious if there's any other, like, small little surprises there and at the very end. You know, obviously... I mean, if you notice, videos, though, but... they don't say presents the final character. They just say this is the final Mr. Sakurai presents, though. Yeah, so, I mean... So, eh. I, I, I mean, I could... I'm definitely reading... This is, like, some... <laughs> this is definitely some, like, Sakurai has purple and yellow chairs level of theorizing here. <laughs> God, but, I forgot about that. <laughs> but, you know, just, just point it out. Yeah. Uh, Jared said something funny, uh... Perfect transition. Speaking of things that took up all the breathing room of this Nintendo Direct. <laughs> oh, is it time? Is it time? It's time. It is. Oh. It is, it is time. Oh. Oh. So I think this, I, I don't think I'm wrong to say this is the thing most talked about coming yep. out of this Nintendo Direct. Oh, absolutely. Now, yeah. now you know, you, you go into a Nintendo Direct and you s- expect new video games for your Nintendo Switch, right? Generally, right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, and this hasn't happened, but maybe you even expect a mobile game, right? Maybe, right? I don't, but I guess um, I'm going. Uh, uh, yeah. But video games, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't go into this expecting movies, and you definitely don't expect a cast announcement. <laughs> so Shigeru Miyamoto shows up, and I think we're all surprised, because this is the yeah. first general direct that Shigeru Miyamoto has showed up in since the Wii U era. It's been thought, a while. I thought New Donkey Kong or something. I was yeah. like, damn, my Miyamoto's here. It's going to be something really cool. It, so, so people saw Miyamoto, and I saw people... And it was. It, and it, it, it was, it, Oh, it was something. You know, but, but it, you know, p- you know, I saw people thinking Pikmin 4. I, you know, That was I, me. <laughs> I, it, was, it was a lot of people, right? Because Miyamoto comes out for Pikmin. That's what you'd think, right? But no. No, 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 no. He came out for a movie. And so he said the release date. It's holiday. It's coming out Christmas... It's Christmas 2022, right? It's literally like four days before Christmas next holiday. And that's the least interesting part of this, right? They <laughs> announced the cast. Now, normally, if you, so if you don't follow movies very much, I, maybe you don't know, but generally a cast announcement is just made in like a fucking press release and it, it goes on like Variety or Hollywood Reporter or stuff like that. Like all those yeah. outlets report that press release, right? And I think if we had seen the list altogether all at once, it would not have made as much of an impact as it did seeing it one by one in a live stream about video games, getting just getting completely blindsided by this. Right? And I don't know if it's intentional. I don't know if Nintendo is this smart, but I really think that this fucking segment was so perfectly paced for maximum yes. impact. Yes. You know? It, Very it, deliberate. It was like so. Then you know you start with Chris Pratt as Mario, right? <laughs> and you're like, what? The fuck? Yeah, I was immediately <laughs> the like, the most oh, Italian man. actor. 
So, I knew we were in for something. Immediately, yeah. you're just like, what's going on? Right? <laughs> my, my thought was, why? <laughs> I, I couldn't like I couldn't process. I was like you know I was like what what Chris Pratt what? Then we see Anya Taylor Joy as Peach. Yeah, I don't right? even know who that is. I'm gonna be real this honest. Is, she was Queen, Queen's, Queen's, Queen's Gambit. Gambit. Queen's Gambit. Oh, okay. um, raging alcoholic in Queen's Gambit. So oh, okay. Um, <laughs> interesting to see that. Um, mm-hmm. th- this was the the breather right between Chris mm-hmm. Pratt. Yeah. To let you process Chris Pratt right. <laughs> um, <laughs> the- <laughs> Then we get fucking uh, Charlie Day as Louis. <laughs> so weird. I don't. It's how. perfect. It's perfect. It, it, uh, I can already imagine the. It's a football line from one of the. It's cartoons. a football Luigi or Mario, whatever the. I don't remember. You get it's naked. A it's a football. That's yeah, Charlie Day that's in Always Charlie Sunny. Day. Beautiful. All right. We get it's like milk steak tea. It's a football. I chiseled it. <laughs> it's incredible. Then we get Jack Black as Bowser. Okay. Great. I just Perfect want to say choice. this right now. I cannot stand Jack Black. I what? find what? him so aggressively oh unfunny God. and annoying. But oh, I am I really... have a school of rock poster in my I'm, room. I don't yes. I don't like school of rock. I'm so not oh. into it. However, oh. I'm willing to give this one a chance because I think he could bring something fun to Bowser. I, I almost think... disconnected. <laughs> Sorry. Not not a not a Jack Black fan here. You're too old to understand Jack Black. Or I... another, another casting member. <laughs> if you wanna if you wanna say the other like comedic one. Right, but I I think so. I, so real quick before we move on, I, we I, we gotta get back on the yeah. on the PowerPoint. Yeah. What's the next one? Give it to so, us. Yeah. So that so then we go into next Keegan Michael Key. As <laughs> Great. That's my love favorite See, one. I like that. I, I one. love this one. I like yeah. that one. Which makes sense too, but it still was hilarious, right? Yeah, it's so good. And then I think this is when I like losing my mind. Is this the best one? Seth yes. Rogen. <laughs> yes. Donkey Kong. I love it. Oh my god. Again, I detest Seth Rogen what? stuff. I just find it so you, amazingly uh, unfunny. Guy, Sans you didn't like Tail Sausage Lab? Party? I uh-huh. will not watch Sausage Party, I promise. Um, <laughs> I, he's not like my thing at all. Like I, I find a lot of that stuff just so annoying. But like I'm just trying to imagine fucking Donkey Kong Donkey talking like Kong Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. <laughs> and then we get one final blip where we get, I forget who the cast members are for these. But Fred Armisen like... is Cranky Kong. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't know, remember the, the guy's two. name, but I was actually most happy to see the Foreman Spike thing confirmed because I thought that was actually fun. And, and so for, I, and this last part was funny because it wasn't cause necessarily because the actors that it was on the hinge, but just knowing that Cranky Kong and Foreman Spike are in this movie is, yep. with speaking roles is quite I, something. I love that the extended Kong family oh, is getting it. more it's, attention. Oh, it's so extended good. Extended Kong family. The, but Foreman so, Spike, let's go. Foreman Spike <laughs> Shout is Shout out to our movie. boy. What is, what is happening? This like... And you so, can tell what the movie is based on the characters that are in it. I mean, we're all we're all gonna see this day one, right? Oh, it's gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna do a podcast about and, that. And yeah. I mean, the, the the first trailer for this movie is gonna be an event, right? Mm, yes. Like 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 people are Seth Rogen laughing Donkey Kong, dying to know how this actually. Sounds they could probably like. end it. They could probably end the next direct. They could the close a direct with the trailer for this mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, this announcement it felt like a fever, a collective fever dream, right? Like, yeah. Well, I, I, again, I was watching this with, and I was in college with someone. We were fucking just howling, like dying. It was, I was unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, the very next segment was Splatoon. Splatoon is a top two Nintendo franchise for me, okay? It's very important to me. I, my brain couldn't process what was happening in Splatoon <laughs> because I was just, I, like, I needed a mental break from what I had just witnessed with the Mario movie. You know, I was just so, just like, out of it i was like what is what is life anymore like what is happening right now i hardly ever do like um man child ish reactions to things (laughs) Uh as fixated as i am on them you know i don't usually freak out or like you know stream or react to stuff but 
I was screeching like <laughs> like a, a a creature from the woods that school children tell stories about yeah. at the cast. I was loud. My sister was angry. <laughs> I, was, I was very just. I was bewildered and very excited. The cast is good. It, the cast, um, I, I cast actually went into this cast. The but whole it, cast is awesome. It, it might be Chris Pratt. It might be because I'm not very, like I'm not very much of a movie person, and also wasn't familiar in depth with some of the people in the cast. But my 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 reaction was not howling, although I did think it was funny. My reaction was kind of just like, at least like, again, this is an outside, someone who's completely outside the space looking in. My actual reaction was kind of just like, okay, that's kind of lame, whatever. And that was, I'm like, I'm glad we're moving on. <laughs> Buzzkill. Buzzkill. Sorry. Oh, I'm going to see it. Clay, but Buzzkill. like, I just don't, I just, it was just like, whatever to me. Ugh. I that's... am genuinely happy that this aired in a Nintendo Direct in the way it did. It, it was perfect. I really, yeah. it, like, it's so stupid. The stupidest thing on earth. And I, I loved every second of it. It was incredible. It was incredible. The, the thing I actually liked the most about what they had to say about the movie wasn't even in the direct. It was that the one of the writers from Into the Spider-Verse is, is yeah, working on the Yeah, and Gravity Falls. The main writer of Gravity Falls. It's Hirsch. And, it's Hirsch. Yeah. Right? yeah. Hirsch. Yep. yeah. Oh, I wish they had yeah. said that. So this might be good? This might be yes. good. Isn't some that of, wild? Some of the... Wild. I think what's been really funny is seeing all the reactions to it because some people are like, that's really funny or like, oh man, you know, haha. And then there's other people who are like, Nintendo is like Disney now and I hate it and it's so corporate and this movie is going to be a disaster. I'm just like... It's Illumination. Illumination is like... I mean, they're the studio that did Steve Carell as Gru. They're minions. They're minions. Yeah. I mean... This is an illumination ass movie. Who, you know? Who's going to be the minion of the oh. Keegan Michael Key? Keegan Michael Key, Keegan Michael Key yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is great. 100%. Fantastic. It's it's incredible. Um yeah, I I just thought, you know, again, like like Raccoon said, like I don't usually have that kind of reaction to things, right? But this this was to me like one of the few moments where I've watched it cuz Nintendo Directs are very highly produced, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is one of the few moments where I felt it was just unhinged, you know? Yeah. And that's what it was meant to be, right? Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but was... they, they probably thought, like, man, they're going to think these actors are so cool. Yeah, it just... I, he's so cool. I love so how... Chris-san. Yeah, when Chris... they said chris -san, The fact that chris -san and jack -san and, Yeah. Like, yeah. And also, he... You know, can you tell me a more ominous sentence than Mario will talk a lot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Chris so Pratt. I guess... Yeah, on, on that topic, actually. So they also showed Charles Martinet's role. Yeah. Um, or kind mm -hmm. of lack of yeah. major role. They alluded to his role. Yeah. He's going to have cameos. So I'm right? curious Wario. what you guys think about that, because that's also been a hotly contested topic. It's Wario. I'm better than Wario. Wario. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. It's, it's, it's He's Wario. done long form Wario before. Yeah. And, and long form Wario, unlike Mario, I feel like it actually works. It, yeah, it, it works quite well. So yeah. he's, he's totally gonna do Wario just for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that makes post sense. Post credits, even. I I I personally feel that his performances as Mario are best short. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that it, voice, it sounds weird when it's long. Yeah, yeah Mario that cannot voice and that energy does not work for actual speaking dialogue. No. Yeah. Um, but but I thought with Wario were playing my but, game. I thought Wario were gold showed it does work with Wario though. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I think Wario actually. Good. I, I did like, like it in WarioWare. I've had I've heard other people saying how much they detested it in in WarioWare what? Gold, which oh I gosh. I get better friends. I don't disagree. <laughs> I mean, excuse me, not I don't disagree. I do disagree with. I actually do like it a lot in those in those games, but I'm kind of curious if they might have it. So like Chris Pratt does like all the speaking dialogue, but maybe if Mario like jumps and grunts or something, then maybe mm. those bits are Charles. I'm kind of curious. That might that might be weird. It might be weird, Maybe. but like I think it also would make some kind of sense. Yeah. If it was like in the background, like maybe you can see his face. You know? Well, I just mean like, yeah, if if you're if you're doing Mario, like it would make sense that he makes these like yelps or whatever when he's doing actions yeah. and then when he talks he doesn't sound like whatever that is. Do you, do you think Mario's gonna jump in this movie? <laughs> I I think it'll depend how uh, Chris Pratt plays the character. 
It depends yeah. what kind of voice he's That's doing. That's the one if, voice where I'm, like, not sold on if, it. Yeah. If he's... I don't know. I have a feeling it's going to be pretty similar to... He did the Lego movie. He's the main guy yeah. in the Lego movie. So it's going to be pretty much Lego movie. I'm just I, imagining so My Star-Lord. brain... My brain feels like... Because I, I really think it'll be set in New Dawn. Right? Yes. Yeah. I, I, Form I, I and think Spike. That's cool. Yeah. I, so you I don't think, think Mushroom Kingdom? No, I think I think this is going for a New York vibe. I really do. Oh, yeah. Um, and I don't so think I want. Right. I'm feeling like a Brooklyn accent, maybe, or like a. Oh <laughs> you know? my gosh! I don't know about all that. <laughs> Lou Albino is going to spin in his grave. <laughs> no, but, Chris, I don't know Brooklyn, but, but I generally do think they're going to go for like a more New Yorker vibe than a Mushroom Kingdom vibe, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, like, it's like, the start. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, start I think New Donk sure. is going to be the setting. So I I have a prediction after credit scene. <laughs> Rosalina cameo. God, oh. it's my it's my prediction. Let's go. I'm all for it. You yes. know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, before we close, I did want some our uh, overall thoughts on the direct. This is what we get raccoon for. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, raccoon, you are someone who thinks about the structure like, very deeply. All I'm right. I'm one in the same. What what, what what what? Tell me about this. We've wasted enough time. <laughs> <laughs> This was just a prelude. This was this, this was my plan. This is the, I t- planned this is the part it this where I take way. a deep breath. <laughs> to wear you all down. You have spent an hour and a half talking. You're tired <laughs> mentally. Your throat's tired. You cannot argue with my ridiculous position. <laughs> Be- that being that this is the greatest Nintendo Direct there has ever been and potentially ever will be. <laughs> I genuinely believe this, and I will now explain why. I'm willing to be sold. I, I, I I'm willing to be sold here. Yeah, let, it, let us. Hear I'm it. not gonna be sold, but I just can't wait to hear it. Are you ready? Yeah, as ready as I'm gonna be. Absolute silence. <laughs> All right. This was the Nintendo Direct of the people, of our people. This was Clay. Absolute silence. <laughs> listen, listen. No, I'm serious about this. Okay. It was it was the culmination of everything, right? It starts with this big epic trailer that looks like Smash Bros. And it's not Smash Bros. That's incredible. We get Sakurai. Final thing. It, it announces another direct. Because our people... We, we are people who... Study directs and we... <laughs> To some extent, maybe not the, to the extent that I have, but, you know, even on the server, a dozen people got on voice call for it. I got together with my sister. Mm-hmm. People get on calls. It's, it's an event, you know, and my thesis here is that in terms of the Nintendo Direct as an event, this was the greatest example we have ever seen, okay? Um, and so many factors went into that. Uh, some of them are circumstantial. Some of them are deliberate to the structure of the show. Uh, and we've sort of on our winding path to this, which is the real purpose of the podcast episode, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> which we've touched on some of these things. We've we've passed them by on our path. And I'm going to connect them together like Pepe Silvia Luigi and explain to you how all of these things we've alluded to come together to create the perfect Nintendo Direct. Irrefutably. Okay, we talked about how there were announcements of announcements. Okay, this is huge. If there's anything that Nintendo fans like, it's being hyped for things that haven't happened yet. <laughs> okay? This Nintendo Direct gave us what we really like, which is directs. This is a Nintendo <laughs> Direct for Nintendo Direct fans because we got two more announced in it. That has never happened before, and it never will happen again. And it was quick, too. It was there's going to be a direct on October 5th and it's like sick. And then it's 3d Kirby and that's sick. And then it's an animal crossing trailer and they don't even show it to you. They're like, there's just going to be a direct at some point. They not only showed everything we've speculated on, but they gave us more to speculate on. They gave us a month animal crossing somewhere. And then another month when animal crossing will come out, it's insane. It's perfectly for this weird Nintendo direct community. 
triangle strategy is the name of the game. We didn't quite <laughs> talk about that. Triangle strategy is the... It, there's so much stuff like that I could lay out, and I'm going to now, because it's it's critical for my argument that I focus. I'm, I've got, like, a Nintendo Direct high right now. I need to bring it back down <laughs> and go through the list of things that are, like, wish fulfillment or prediction fulfillment for us. This is the Nintendo Direct of our people, Okay. So first of all, and this isn't really to do with the show, but I think it's important for our perspective on it, is how it happened and the entire month, basically, or three weeks of trying to figure out when this thing was going to happen and the path we took. And I'm not going to recount that whole path, partially because it's embarrassing how many times I was wrong. But (laughs) at the end, right at the end, we got all this evidence for when it was going to happen, okay? We got the FCC filings, which also showed us that the N64 controller was happening. We knew that the goddamn N64 controller was happening, okay? And it had the confidentiality moved up. We knew the week it had to be. Uh, We knew about that fucking holiday in Japan. So even though it was a stupid-ass Wednesday year, we knew it was going to be Thursday. And I knew, and some people on the server knew, when the tweet was going to go out. And that's insane, that, that, that I, I know that shit doesn't matter, and I definitely know that shit isn't on purpose, but it is, like, the foundation or the precursor to this incredible event, which was the fact that the first layer of things that we could predict that actually came true, and that's, that's a beautiful thing. And then all the content was very similar, okay? The sorts of things that people joke about or think would be kind of cool happened. 3D Kirby. People have been talking about 3D Kirby forever, and it happened, and it's glorious. The Smash Bros. is like, put a pin in it. Animal Crossing put a pin in it, but they both are a thing. Triangle Strategy, I must stress again, is the name of a real (laughs) video game that's going to come out. They just did it again. They did the, the... Okay, this Direct was predictable things that were batshit crazy. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think and that's, that's like, yeah, like we all expect a, a Kirby thing. game, yes. right? But not in the way we all expect Triangle Strategy to come up, but not in the way of oh yeah, this is the fucking final name, right? Yes, yes. We, we expect to see a story mode yes. in Splatoon, yes. but we didn't oh, expect oh, to oh. see furry. I am far from done. <laughs> <laughs> Yoshiaki Koitsumi came out and said that they were going to sell not only the N64 controller, as we knew about, but an official Nintendo Sega Genesis controller. That's nuts. That's crazy. That's and price the, and hiked from all the rest because it's so the special. P- the, price <laughs> hike, the price hike of NSO is something that we've been talking about forever, and it happened. 3D Kirby happened. Fucking just dropping projects from the name is something that we joked about and it happened. Shit people joked about happening is a glorious thing when it's stuff that mostly doesn't matter. You know, shit posts becoming real is beautiful. It's, oh. it's beautiful. The cast, Chris Pratt is Mario. That w- that was like the 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 gems, like the like the gemstone or the keystone, perhaps, if we went for a different metaphor of the direct was the cast because it was like synecdoche for the rest of the event, which was just batshit insane things that you joked about becoming real. Splatoon three. Oh, I have a great story about Splatoon three. I was watching it with my sister, as I said before, and she was like, how's he going to do the Splatoon 3 with his body? And I stood up and I did it. And then a minute later, he did it. (laughs) Uh, Can you comment on that? That that is incredible. That didn't make sense at all. That is is beautiful. I'm I'm so happy that you did that. You did the Splatoon 3 with your body? The 3? Yes. The The 3. Oh, you made the 3. Nogami did the 3. My sister was like, how is he going to do the 3? And And I stood up, and I did the 3, and I sat back down, and then Nogami (laughs) did the 3, the way I did it, with my leg. I got my leg up. I I do want to point out, though, it was not Nogami, it was Squid Researcher. Oh, my mistake. Um, (laughs) And... uh, I, I think he's been practicing his core strength to, to, to do yes, that pose. Yes, no doubt. I, Dude, I think he's been practicing. I was waiting for him to fall. <laughs> <laughs> that would have made it perfect. 
when they zoomed out to his feet, I was like, I know what's happening. I know exactly what's happening. Oh. This is... <laughs> and and then the gonna... last thing was yeah. uh, fucking after, as we alluded to before, after four years, Bayonetta 3 mm-hmm. exists again. And that was like the number one holy shit. And I'm like, I don't even give a fuck about Bayonetta. I haven't played Bayonetta. I don't give a shit. But it's incredible. And that's where the distinction that I feel is worth noting between um, spectacle and actually playing video games. And I think there's a divide there. And I think when it trends on Twitter and people get on calls together and there are whole Discord servers talking about it and Discord voice calls, that it's worth noting that this is in itself an event that people get together and you get to see where this company is and where they're going and i think that the movie being part of it is a good thing for that you know we saw something they're doing with their um brand something with their intellectual property with their world and their character and that's just a great example of because with the hardware too with the controllers we get to see a a more varied holistic view of Nintendo um, and that is why this is the greatest Nintendo Direct of all time I and I, I maintain you, you, that you've missed something you've missed uh, two games one update <laughs> yes I did miss two games one update because you know as much as I love this and I will maintain that I love it there were some interesting oddities with it um as a scholar of nintendo directs at this point i feel qualified to talk about some of that the headlines thing they're kind of clinging to um when it doesn't make sense jared is referring to uh the classic uh two games one update <laughs> headline in the direct which Wait, was really maybe hilarious hilarious of course yes well i yes. should maybe two people games. who are too online well but, they want you to know it's two games one game update and a whole lot of fun okay mm-hmm. that's what oh okay my mistake. a whole yeah. lot of fun a okay. whole lot of fun yes. Yes. No, nothing else in this direct is fun there's but big, these three games are fun. a big missed opportunity not to follow that up with mario farty <laughs> I, it, it, the headlines format, it, it's it's some this, these are moments where it falls apart, right? Like it's just yes. like there's no sense in this. Like what is what are they doing? And it's kind of inconsistent too, um, <laughs> because sometimes the host transitions things, and uh, I don't know. I guess that couldn't have been three separate headlines. But you know, when you start thinking about that sort of thing, why don't you just show stuff? You know? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, you know, you sold me, though, on this idea that this is the best Nintendo It direct. is the greatest Nintendo Direct It is the greatest Nintendo time. Direct. I, you know, yeah. maybe... And because we were talking about this right before the podcast, right? I think a good presentation can elevate the sum of its parts, right? Yes. I think a bad presentation can detract from it, right? You could have... And, you know, a great example, man, I'm going to go full into console wars once again... 2018, Sony does an E3 press conference. They come in with The Last of Us Part 2, Ghost of Tsushima, Dead Stranding, Marvel Spider-Man, and that conference is widely panned, right? Yeah. I, Nintendo shows up with fucking Kirby and Bayonetta and it's and, and, and a cast announcement for a movie and, and a paid tier to get what you should have already had and this is lauded, right? And, think about, think about and the reactions the greatest... between... Um... Wait, 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 one second. Think about the reactions, reaction difference between when Sony announced that Powers TV show and when <laughs> Nintendo announced the Mario cast announcement. It, it's a, it's a, com- yeah, that, that, you know, that establishes perfectly, like, you know, the, you can, even stuff that people shouldn't, that video game, that gamer, the G, capital G gamers do not give a shit about. <laughs> they found a way to make them care about, right? It, it, a good presentation can do that, right? And I think this was a very good... Pre- like, I think this was an excellent Nintendo Direct. Even if, like... Like, I, like I'm, ex- I'm looking forward to a lot of these games, but these are not, like... Kirby's not one of my favorite franchises, right? Like, neither, Bayonetta, I like Bayonetta, but it's not up there for me, right? In terms of sheer announcements, there's been Directs that I have 
enjoy it more, right? In terms of just mm-hmm. sheer announcement, like with the games, like, yeah. right? But I, I, I think I agree with Raccoon. I think this is Nintendo Direct at its best, you know? Like, yes. the pacing was all killer, no filler, you know? It, it, it was just it, thing after thing. It was... It, it, Every like almost everything managed to have some sort of surprise in it, you know. You were just on your toes the whole time. It was great. It was just a very excellent Nintendo Direct. Yeah, I, damn, I'm convinced. It is. It is the best Nintendo for, Direct of all time. For me, um, um, just overall thoughts was there was stuff I liked in it, um, but overall it's it was pretty mid for me. Um, it's which is fine. I all I go into these things hoping for is that. I'll find a few things that I like, and then everything else is just whatever. And I definitely got more than a few things that I liked, so you know I'm good. That's that's the same for me. It's like it was it was Kirby, it was Bayonetta, and a few smaller things. There was there was no huge surprises, and like I think what makes like a best direct game wise for me is like a few more first party like new first party titles. Yeah. So just having the one in this one was yeah. a little disappointing, but like overall really enjoyable. Yeah, like, it's in funny terms that, of... so sorry, it's, it's funny that Kirby is the only brand new first party de- announcement, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Which, I mean, is also kind of because they've, I don't want to say they've blown their load, but, like, they have announced a lot of their 22, 2022 yeah. lineup earlier than normal mm-hmm. this year. Because um, they needed to, like, like keep that momentum going. And what were you saying, Barry? I was going to make the... Um, uh, probably more popular assertion that in terms of games, this is the weakest direct of the year, of the of the big three. Yeah, yeah, I, would say so. I, I I wouldn't disagree honestly. But again, the presentation was just so yes. strong. You know, it was an event. This is yeah. an event that Twitter loved. You know, I mean, and honestly, like I feel like, and it, you know, like we you know we joke about Raccoon saying this, and he's dead serious. And I I I'm I, I want to be clear. I am dead serious in supporting this. I agree. Uh, but honestly, I have felt the reaction to this direct on on social media has been stronger than usual for a direct to the point where I've been I've been taken aback by how much people enjoyed this Nintendo direct. I, I have been too. Yeah, I was surprised to see how many positive reactions there were after it aired. There was much less Doom posting than I'm used to seeing. Yeah. You know why? You know why the Doom posting is because Chris Pratt partially? was there. Because of Chris <laughs> Pratt. No, it's because it's it's like the core of this strategy is that they announced two more directs in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, genuinely, you can yeah, you can I imagine right. whatever hope you can extrapolate whatever hope onto the Smash character and Animal Crossing by putting Smash, which is a source of dis- disappointment and controversy, into its own thing. That makes Smash its own thing. It doesn't detract from a presentation. E3 gets dragged down by people who don't like Tekken. You know, February gets dragged down by people who don't like Pyro and Mithra. Um, September, it could be fucking anybody. And that means it's your favorite. Yeah. You know, you watching. It's uh, your favorite Smash yeah, character. As, You're in Smash. Yeah, as, you get as, to be in Smash. As of today, it is whoever you want it to be. Yes. Right? Your dreams yes. have not been crushed. The final character will be the one you want. Exactly. Right? This was a direct of hope. But yeah. trust us, your dreams will be crushed, <laughs> and you will not like the last character in Smash. Um, well, on that note, we do have to wrap up, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, on that very positive, wonderful note. You, you'll hate the Animal Crossing uh, stuff, and you'll hate the they, last they Smash will. character. They will. The, the there Animal will Crossing be no people, gyroids. They will not be pleased. But if you enjoyed this podcast, we, uh, you know, we're this is the Nintendo Pipeline podcast. First of all, mm-hmm. join our Discord. There's Give us yeah. money. And Do you guys have a Patreon calls? yet? <laughs> we're not, we don't, you know, maybe we should, though. We'll look into that. Uh <laughs> Because I'm just saying, this was the best ep- podcast episode you'll hear about this Nintendo mm-hmm. Direct. I guarantee, I it's personally true. guarantee it. There aren't know? better ones. No, no way. You know what, you're here, oh yeah, I like Kirby. No, you know, like, no, we give you the real deal here, okay? I gave you intellectual discussion. Amen. A bold claim, <laughs> backed up by facts and reasoning. Whoa. No other podcast in the world can give you that. No, ben Shapiro not. out here talking about Nintendo Directs? No, <laughs> me. I'm, I'm Nintendo Ben Shapiro. <laughs> okay. So you also want to fuck your sister? 
Yes. Oh, oh, oh dude, no. we're leaving that in. <laughs> well, Not mine, but, but all right. Know. And that's all for today. <laughs> oh my god. Are we gonna cut that? No. no. Absolutely no. not. But no, it's not going to be cut. On that note, if you like this podcast, uh, we're we're on YouTube. We're on anywhere you can find a podcast. That's Stitcher, YouTube, uh, uh, Apple, Apple Podcasts, right? Google Spotify. Podcasts, yeah. Spotify, wherever. You know, you're. I mean, I assume you found a way to listen to this, right? Mm. You can keep doing that, or you could find us something you like more. You know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, Join our Discord, the Nintendo Pipeline Discord. Uh, we have over two thousand members now. You can yeah, get thank milestones. you, thank you, thank oh you. Oh my God! Uh, yeah, thank huge, you so much. Huge, huge milestone for us. Um, and you know, it's it's a great place to talk about Nintendo. It really is, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, otherwise we're here generally every week. Next week we're gonna talk about WarioWare. That's yeah. gonna be great. Uh, we're, we'll be here to talk about Smash. It's gonna be a fun month, I think. The next yeah. month is just gonna be really, really Eight fun. Months. So, so look forward to that. And, yeah. and, and, and we do and. have uh, Nintendo Pipeline dot WordPress dot com, which is yeah. a sometimes active community <laughs> blog, um, especially with all the new people. And I hope you take the time to just take a look through some of the articles and if you're Cruise interested through the backlog yeah. i wrote yeah. one and, and to the new people, i wrote if one you want to write anything if you are yeah. interested in writing know. stuff let us know because we really want to uh continue yeah. that if Rack- you want any more is very good yes if you want any more logical reasoning from me yeah maybe <laughs> intellectual will scholar finishes pikmin series you know <laughs> i also have a book report on a uh, mario choose your own adventure book a uh, very true. good article and uh also, more recently, we did have, have an episode of the podcast where uh, Mary Celeste and West Egg joined us to talk about Skyward mm. Sword, and it was released with a uh, review by Mary Celeste, and they have a few up there. So, Hold on. Uh, did you have a, an episode with five people? No, no, no. Me no, and no, Muffin no. did not show up. Then. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't play me. Skyward Sword by then, so I did not want to be on it, because I had yeah. nothing to say about it. <laughs> we'll talk about that after, but yeah, but anyway. wasn't that... <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, you know, so check out our website, check out our Discord, keep listening to this podcast, subscribe to it, rate us five stars, iTunes, all that jazz. Like, comment, subscribe. And one final note, it is the official opinion of this podcast that this was the best Nintendo Direct of all. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right, Man. episode over. And... Oh, yeah, no, I, I'm editing. <laughs> All right, I'm fucking done recording.